Greetings and salutations and welcome to Sweagles Hockey on Hockey TV. Scott Nason broadcasting from Polar Stadium in downtown Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan on this last Friday in the month of October as we await the start of tonight's NLJHL contest between the Sweagles and the Hearst Lumberjacks. Joined once again tonight by our color commentator, Larry Pazabon. And well, Paz, first of all, welcome back. Thank After you. a one-game hiatus, the masses were clamoring <laughs> for more Larry Pazabon. I got emails, I got texts, I got tweets. What happened to Larry? Did he get himself? He did. He was out of town. Welcome back. Thank you, thank you. Yes, I was uh, just a little short story there. I went down to Kingston, Ontario, and I was helping my... Uh, Wife's cousin's husband, uh, he's running for election. So oh, he, I was did he win? Out. He won. Okay. He won. Now, so, what, what, what position was that for? Is that uh, like a local a, a, city yeah, position? Yeah, a counselor. Okay, very so good. So he, he, he got the most vo- votes out of the three of them in that group, so that was good. Clearly the Russians had something to do with that, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. but Larry, the well, Russians- no, it was me that had something to do with it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> well, the Russians had nothing to do with the Eagles winning on Saturday. Yes. That is the Eagles had their, in my opinion, best performance of the year as they defeated Espinola last Saturday night by the score of 6-1. to one. Maybe I should stay away more often. <laughs> Maybe, indeed. <laughs> but uh, Eagles had a solid game, really from start to finish, in my opinion. They came out with, I think, a little urgency, Larry. And, you know, you look at how the beginning of the season has gone. Obviously, when the season started, the Eagles didn't want to be in this position. They didn't want to be in fifth place. They didn't want to be here with the 6-10 and 10 record. But... You know, you can't change that. You can only focus on what's here and what's ahead. And what's ahead for the Eagles this weekend and throughout most of November is Eastern teams and long road trips. As Eagles will be here tonight against Hurst and tomorrow night against Timmins. And then they're going to make two trips in three weeks to the Great White North. I don't know if it's white yet, but they're going to be taking Timmins. on Timmins. And, Had a little uh, bit of snow there. Yeah, Powassan and all those teams. So a crucial stretch, Larry, for the Eagles against the Eastern Division, which appears a bit stronger than it was last year. If you remember last year, the Eagles had a pretty easy time yeah, against they the did. Eastern teams. I believe they went 12-2. and two. Much different East, and we're going to see two pretty good teams here in Hurst and Timmins this weekend. Yes, uh, Her- uh, Timmins, uh, no, excuse me, Hurst has uh, they've gotten better. Uh, they're still not up to par with the rest of the league, I believe, but they have gotten better, and that's good for the for the, the boys themselves. I say boys all the time, young men, and uh, the coaching staff, and, and the people of Hurst. Looking at the standings, Larry, as I mentioned, the Eagles come into tonight's game with a record of 6-10. and 10. They're in fifth place in the West with 12 points, two points behind Elliott Lake, who is in fourth with 14 points. Eagles do have one game in hand against the Wildcats, and Espinola in sixth place with six points, six points behind the Eagles. And if you look at the other three teams, Larry, uh, you have three teams in the West that are tied for first place. The Thunderbirds, the Beavers, and Rayside Balfour. However, standing's a little bit skewed because the Thunderbirds have only played 14 games, three less than Blind River and six less than Rayside Balfour. Now, Thunderbirds team that beat Rayside Balfour last night. So while you have three teams in first place right now, Clearly, at the beginning of the season, it's the Thunderbirds still the class of the West at this point. They are, yeah. They had uh, 12 returning players, and uh, I, I was surprised at that. But and they're doing a tremendous job. It helps when you got a lot of veterans on your team. You know, speaking of the Thunderbirds, Larry, uh, they were not in action over this past weekend, and uh, I don't know if you knew this. I actually didn't know this, but the Thunderbirds actually went on a road trip to Wisconsin. Uh, part of a exhibition series and kind of a recruiting experience for the Sioux Thunderbirds as they took on a pair of NCAA Division Three teams this past weekend in the Northern Collegiate Hockey Association taking on Lawrence and Concordia of Wisconsin. You know, types of schools that a lot of these players will end up going to potentially right. in Division Three. Uh, they, they fared pretty well. They lost both games. Uh, one game went to overtime, but uh, a nice job by the league to allow them to do to this and it'd be nice to see maybe the Eagles and other teams have this opportunity to maybe go to some of these college schools uh, you know D3 schools get some experience on the ice and you know maybe make some good contacts for later on these kids could you know possibly play there you're right yeah now I don't know if that's the same league that the Sioux College uh, Cougars play I in I believe so it's similar yeah, so, I know that yeah. yeah but I think they're a college and uh, NC D Division 3 correct and but I think maybe that's the NCAA or WCHA Division Three. Right. 
But yeah, that they I was reading a little bit about that. Yes, they did all right. I mean, two games yeah. to go there and, and uh, show their wares. Hurst, yeah, Hurst ends, enters this contest also in fifth place with a record of 7-6-1, and one, good for 15 points. They're four points behind the surging Cochrane Crunch, who have moved up to fourth place in 19 points. And the story of the East right now, Kirkland Lake off to a fantastic start, 13-3, 26 points. Timmins in second with 23 points with a record of 11-5-1. and one. They'll be here tomorrow night. Powassan kind of slumping a little bit as of late. They are in third place with 21 points, 10-6-1. and one. So again, Larry, you look at the East, you have five teams that are above 500. In the West, you only have three. We saw in the showcase tournament a couple weeks ago, the East did better against the West. So the power maybe has shifted a little bit, but we'll see here tonight if the Eagles can maybe uh, get that balance of power shifted back to the West. You're right. Now, now speaking of Powassan in third spot there, uh, they, they're holding the, they're hosting the Dudley Hewitt this year. That's Cochran. Or Cochran? Yep. I thought it was Powassan. No, nope, that's oh. Cochran, yep. Oh, so. Well, there you go. Oh, okay. I forget what I was talking about. <laughs> a, just kind of stopped your thunder, didn't I? Well, I do know something you could talk about, Larry, is, uh, well, first of all, for those that are watching at home, thank you for tuning in. And one of the things that Larry and I like to do during our broadcast is make it a very interactive fan broadcast. And we welcome those fans of the Sioux Eagles and also the visiting team, the Hearst Lumberjacks, to contact us during the game. Now, the easiest way you can do so is by going on Twitter. You can tweet me at snason2013. That's snason2013. And we do have a few tweets, Larry, before we get to your uh, okay. shout-outs of people that came up here. want to say hello to the Blair family watching all across the Fruited Plain. Brendan Blair's dad, Tom, is watching tonight at Puller Stadium in the house. His grandparents, Myron and Sherry Blair, watching from Fort Lauderdale. Also, Brendan's mother and sister, Carla and Lauren Blair, they're watching from St. Louis. And want to say hello to the Parrott family watching tonight. And former Sioux Eagle, Zach Parrott, is here tonight at Polar oh, Stadium. Great. Now, nice. Larry, we talked to a whole plethora of parents <laughs> and sisters and uh, Eagles uh, associates. So why don't you uh, give yeah. some shout-outs there? Today, we, well, tonight we had Joe... Uh, Benedito's uh, dad came up, Bob, and uh, Mother Pam is here, and they're. He, this man was excited, boy. He was happy I to be here. He, he was happy to meet us. Well, he drove a long way. Yeah, and, and he just enjoys our broadcast. So again, thank you very much to him, and also uh, number eighteen, Ralph Prisner. His dad showed up here, and and his mom also. No, mom's watching back at home. Oh, okay. Yep. Bianca. Bianca. Back yeah. in Dallas. I and believe. the yep. dad Pat is here. Yep. So he, he's he's a happy guy too. They. they Again, we're tooting our own horns here because thank you, everybody, when you when you call in because we try and do a good job here, and we only know it from what you have to say to us. So, again, that's the two that showed up so far. And then the Orfanos family also. We got, to, sorry, got, to, yes. got to meet uh, got to meet Catherine. Catherine, the, the daughter. First time. And we got to say hello to Uncle Tony. Yep. Uncle Tony, yeah. Tony watching back. And, now, and oh, now I got dis- I'm disappointed on this. Now, no Steve, boy. Steve's buddies there, Larry, Jeff, and Ted, no show. I know. No show. Yeah, well, well, you know. I was ready to have the boys back in town, but <laughs> no they'll, show. They'll hopefully be back in town yeah. very soon. Larry, let's look at the scratches tonight. First of all, for the visiting Hearst Lumberjacks, players not in the lineup include number five, Matthew Castillo, Castillo number seven, Sebastian Doucet, Doucet, excuse me, and number 88, Sam Godrew. For the Sioux Eagles, now they are still without three players who are serving the third of their three-game suspension in that uh, brouhaha that happened against <laughs> Cochran there a couple weeks ago. Not in the lineup tonight, serving the the three-game suspension, the third game, number 19, Jack Strauss, number 25, Ari Lerman, and number 26, Nathan Brown. Other players not in the lineup tonight include number five, Kurt Rieger, number eight, Kobe Keller, Number and number 23, Ryan Dax, and goaltender number one, Nico Menetis. And a couple new players, Larry. We saw him last week. He was wearing 14 last week. He switched to number six, Charlie Hanawalt. Very impressed by his performance on Saturday. I thought he really started off the season well. He was involved in a lot of plays, a physical player. I think you're going to like him. And a brand new player, number 14, Dominic Scarella. He is the newest Eagle, and we could see more. New players in the lineup here. Uh, some maybe familiar names from the past, potentially. You'll just have to stay tuned and find out. And just stay tuned in, Larry. Okay. It's always, always a good thing. <laughs> now, tonight is Pink in the Rink, eh? This it weekend. is. It pink is. Pink in the Rink. So those uh, back home, 
If you want to bet, uh, bet on a, <laughs> put bet. a bet on. We're, we're, put we're a, doing bets here. <laughs> no. <laughs> If well, you want to try and win a jersey, not uh, win. Not. I guess win if you got the highest at the end of the second period tomorrow. First period, second period tomorrow. Uh, yeah, let, 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 let's set it up here, Larry. The starting bids are $100 right. for the jerseys. The jerseys that you see on the ice are the jerseys that you can bid on for each individual player. Now, when you bid, Larry's going to give you the information. Make sure you put the name, the number, and how much you want to bid. Larry, how would somebody back at home do so? Back at home? Sure. They'd have to call or text 1-906-322-3330. One more time. One more time. 1-906-322-3330. And starts at 100 and increments of, <coughs> excuse me, $5. For you to say. $5 increments if you, uh, somebody's in there against you. Yeah, yeah. If someone has a hundred and ten dollar bid, you're not going to bet a hundred and eleven. No, this isn't the clock game, and the price is right. If you remember that one. Yeah. Remember five hundred higher, five hundred one higher. That's that's like buying something on an auction on TV. That is. You that wait is. for the last second to throw that bid in. So we'll we'll mention that name or number and uh, ways you can do so throughout the period. Before we go to Bob St. Peter for the starting lineups, this is the fifty first ever meeting between the Sioux Eagles and the Hearst franchise. Now, this Hearst franchise has been quite a few places, oh, Larry. Yeah. They, uh, before they were Hearst, they were at Iroquois Falls. If you remember them, the Eskies. Yes. They've also been in North Bay as the Trappers and the Skyhawks. So, okay. uh, again, this, this is a team that uh, has some history. Eagles, uh, 21 wins, 24 losses, and two ties. So it's been a pretty competitive series. But throw all those records out the window, Larry, because nobody cares about that. We are all set for NLJHL hockey action between the Sioux Eagles and the Hearst Lumberjacks. We're going to take a break here from Bob St. Peter, who will have the starting lineups. We'll also have our national anthems sung by Dan Kinney and the start of tonight's game here from Puller Stadium on Hockey TV. So there we have it, Larry, the starting lineups, national anthems, officials, and we are just about set to go here. The second meeting of the season between the Eagles and the Lumberjacks. These two teams met at the NLJHL Showcase earlier this month with the Eagles skating away with an overtime victory over Hurst. They'll play one more time in November as the Eagles and Lumberjacks set to start. And Larry, uh, one more shout out on Twitter. Okay. Uh, very uh, nice to hear from this young man. Carter McPhail. You oh, probably remember him, yes. uh, the Sioux Eagles goaltender, now playing for the Johnstown Tomahawks. He's tuned in tonight to watch the boys play. Oh, good. And he says he misses us. Oh, great. We miss, we miss you miss too, him, Carter. Yeah. And hey, you are good definitely luck. in a right place there. Johnstown, a great place to play hockey. And we are underway here at Puller Stadium. Again, the Eagles in their pink in the rink jerseys, the black with pink and white trim. Hurst in their road white jerseys with the orange and black trim. Eagles going left to right as seen on your video monitor. Now the Eagles come in a quick shot and a save there by Tallarico, the goaltender, uh, a short goaltender there, Larry. Uh, Mr. Tallarico, I don't know what his official height is, but uh, he kind of reminds me of the former Red Wings goaltender Manny Legacy, kind of looking like uh, him and that, uh, one of the shorter goaltenders I think we've seen here. Uh, I believe you in that too. He is quite short. Doesn't mean he's not good. No, just, he's just, here. Just he's here. That's right. Yeah. Puck down the ice. Chance for the Lumberjack. Quick shot. And Joe Benedetto makes the save. His first of the night as James McDonald. The chance for Hurst as they get their first shot on net here quickly in the first period. McDonald had some wheels out there. Good catch that puck and get in and get a good shot. Face off. Controlled by the Lumberjacks. Fortin at the blue line. The play down behind the net. James McDonald. He gets knocked down there by Cam Parrott. Now Parrott over in the far corner. Picked up by Morich. Brett Morich with the puck. Morich crossed the blue line. Goes off the skate of Hannawall. Picked up by the Lumberjacks. Hurst with the puck. Clark at center ice. Number six, Cameron Clark. Dumps it down into the Eagle zone. Benedetto behind the net. Now Parrott has it. Paired along the near side boards to center ice. Now chased in there by Moran. Waddell back to Moran. Now the Lumberjacks clear it to center. Chased into the zone. Picked up there by Alex Schwab. Want to stay a little to Sven Schwab. 
We're likely watching tonight on Hockey TV. Where's he at? Today? I don't know. He was, um, I'm trying to think where he was last week. I think he was somewhere closer to home. Hopefully he's not down in Florida there looking for mad bombers. <laughs> now here's the puck at center ice. Taken there by Schwab. Now intercepted there by Clark over to Waddell. Waddell with a shot. Misses the net on the short side. Puck goes over along the far boards. Hurst with a good start here. Long bus trip from Hurst, Larry. What is that, about 10 hours maybe? I'm not sure. I've never been up there. But it's way near James Bay anyways. Yep. Now shot back in. Tellerico behind the net. Again, if you want to contact Larry and I during the broadcast, please do so by going on Twitter, snason2013. We not only like to hear from Sioux Eagles fans, we also like to hear from the visiting fans as we have a face-off in the Eagles zone. Okay, folks, when you're here, a lot of you know that already, but uh, we got a good snack bar down here. you got a, po a polar burger or a regular burger. they got fries, poutine, popcorn, candy. Take care of your needs. Everything. Now puck in the Eagles zone. Quick shot there. Cannon, that goes wide. Now back to the point. Lacroix, his shot. That deflects wide. Page picks it up. Back to Lacroix. His shot. That goes behind the net. Now Cannon has it. Cannon, back to the point. That one's going to go out of the out, zone. Yeah. Yep. And Zach Johnson will chase that for the Eagles. Shots 1-1 early here in the first period. Now Lacroix. Johnson with it as some players tangle up over at the far boards. Now Moore try to put it in front, a shot that goes wide, and the net goes off the moorings, and we'll have a face-off in the Hearst zone. I missed that. Who took that? Was that one? Is there a 14 out there? No? Okay. Other games in the NLJHL tonight, Larry. Three others besides this one. Timmons will be here tomorrow night. They're in Blind River tonight. They lead a Blind River by the score of 1 to nothing after one period of play. No score in Espinola between Rayside Balfour and the Express. That's early in the first period. And after one period of play in Powas and the Voodoos leading Kirkland Lake 1-0. No score here. Three minutes into this first period. Griffin with the puck. For Kirkland Lake. Or excuse me, for Hurst. Kirkland Lake on the mind. Look now here this. come the Eagles with the chance. Praisner in. Praisner. That's and a it. goal. He made the save. Tellerico made the save, but the puck bounced over his chest and over his head and into the net. Raf Praisner, whose dad's in attendance, bomb watching in Dallas, liking that one as the Eagles lead by the score of one to nothing, with 16:46 to play in the first period. So the start the Eagles won, and they get on the board first. We'll hear from Bob St. Peter on the goal. Eagle goal, goal scored by number 18, Raf Praisner. Assist. Number 21, Riley Now a chance Jensen. for the Eagles again, a and shot. number seven, Brendan Blair. So Jensen and Blair with the assist. Didn't mean to cut off Bob there, but the Eagles had a good scoring chance as Riley Jensen came into the zone, and his shot was saved there by Tallarico. And so the Eagles starting to pick up the play here. 16-27 to play in the first period. one nothing in favor of the home team. Again, folks, when you're here, we have... Uh, oh, 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 won't have time on this one. <laughs> now face-off won by the Eagles. Puck in the slot. That's Hannawall with it. Now Hannawall's pass quickly to Schwab. Puts a quick shot on. Block. Now Young has it for the Lumberjacks. Cross the blue line. Golant. Golant at the far corner. Now he'll wrap it down low. Lumberjacks with it. Eagles try to kick it out of the zone. They do. Now the Eagles chase the puck into the Hearst zone. Caleb Wood. No. That's going to be an icing call. Now we have a little extracurricular activity, but not much will happen there. That'll bring the face off back in the Eagles zone. So once again, Larry, these replica jerseys, or I should say the pink and the rink jerseys, the Eagles are wearing. Those at home, you don't have to be at Polar Stadium to bid on these jerseys. You can if you are here, but if you're maybe at home, maybe a parent that couldn't make it. I know the Blair family's watching tonight. Lots of families watching. Next whistle, Larry will tell you how you can bid on one of those jerseys. Actually, he'll tell you right, right now. now. Yeah, Bid on a jersey? Call or text 1-906-322-3330. 1-906-322-3330. Starts at 100. 
increment bids of five dollars make sure you put the name and number of the jersey that you like to bid on just for clarification now puck back in the neutral zone chased in by Berdahl now the Eagles put it in for a second now here's Griffin Griffin now pass shot save there Benedetto now behind the net Hurst has it, and that's going to be a whistle, and I think the net's off the moorings area. We saw that a lot this past weekend. Well, we've seen it a lot this year. It seems to always happen here at Polar Stadium. Another thing, uh, talking about these jerseys, when I was downstairs earlier, I think if you bid on a jersey, you can have your own name put on the back of it because oh. they don't have any names on them. I'll have to follow up with that, but I'm pretty sure that was mentioned. Well, I just got the follow-up on it, and yes, I'm <laughs> correct on that. <laughs> that was good follow-up, Larry. <laughs> you got some very uh, knowledgeable sources. A.K.A. Rob Horn, cameraman to your right. Well, don't get my secret And, and knowledgeable and Rob Horn don't usually go in the same sentence, so. <laughs> oh, I didn't say that. <laughs> That's two singers here, too. Better watch out. He's going to throw me over this gondola if I don't be careful. No, don't do that. Then I'd have to broadcast. I don't, <laughs> nobody wants that. Now Mickey Butcher with it. Now Hannah Wall in his own zone. See, I only tease the ones that I really like, Larry, so, so I don't tease you. Oh. Now the Lumberjacks with the puck. Now the Eagles have it. Picked up by Arkel. Now Arkel shoots it back into the zone. Shots 3-3 here in this first period. Eagles lead 1-0. Look out, that one's going to go into the crowd and out of play. As Praisner with the goal for the Sioux Eagles. The first goal. And he now has four goals on the season. A little hesitation there. Couldn't do your gozintus? <laughs> no, no, I couldn't. <laughs> right. Eagles, Eagles lose a face off. Now Hurst with the puck. Behind the net. Lumberjacks with the chance. A shot. Save Benedetto. Rebound. Again. Another chance. That hit. Looked like it might hit Parrott in front. Now Parrott clears it to center. Now here's the Eagles with it. Good chance for Scarella. Now he had a poke checked away. Hurst clears the zone. Nice pass. Goes to James McDonald. James McDonald moves in, law on the near boards. They'll dump it down low. Lumberjacks with the puck. Hurst comes up with it behind the net. Now the Eagles player Blair gets over there. Blair up to Wood. Caleb Wood, neutral zone. Nice pass off the boards to Blair. Blair moves in, quick wrist shot, and a save there by Talarico. And he'll hold with 13.59 to play in this first period. 1-0 in favor of the home team. Okay, folks, when you're here, the Eagles' nest is open. They have ice cold beer, wine coolers, Chicago style popcorn, uh, I think pretzels there also. Yes, I think so. And soda pop. Want to say hello to Sven Schwab. He's heading to St. Louis for the midterm election. I don't know if you know it, Larry, but we're having some elections around in these parts in, in about ten days. Yeah. And uh, Mrs. Schwab Lana is here this weekend. Oh yeah, so, oh, yeah great. We'll have to make sure to seek her out and say hello. And uh, good luck. Stay away from the mobs there. Mr. Schwab. There's mobs on all sorts of sides, apparently. Now we're going to have some penalties. No, no. we're just going to have a face-off outside I, the blue line. I, I didn't see what the call was. 13.51 to play in this first period. Eagles lead by the score of 1 to nothing. We'll be here tomorrow night against the Timmins Rock. 7 o'clock face-off. Larry now with the pregame show at 6.45. Now shot goes wide. Goes back to center ice. Now trickles into the eagle zone. Richard Bullware with it. Behind the net. Waddell on him. Now puck along the far board. Pass in front. A shot and a goal. Nif no, they wave it off. Waddell with the goal. Are they going to say he maybe a uh, hand? Uh, I don't know. But I, uh, the puck or? But that whole thing started on the. Uh, he thinks he scored, Larry. Yeah. He's going to the bench, but the ref clearly waved that goal off I don't think Waddell knows it he's saying that's a goal but one of the referees clearly waved that off and we're gonna get some clarification here on what happened he was pretty adamant that that was not a goal I I, 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 I was watching how that started with interference by Hurst at the blue line stopped the Eagles from getting out the puck came loose went across to the guy he shot Waddell shot but it went up high, so I'm not sure if it went under or hit the post to come down. Well, it definitely looked like the puck was in. That that was pretty clear from my angle. The light never went on neither. Well, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe they said that he gloved it to, I don't know. We'll have to 
get clarification, but Larry, this goal is not going to count. And so uh, Mr. Waddell obviously not very happy about that. He goes to the bench, and the coaching staff not happy and as well. No, they didn't go to the box to let us know what exactly why at no goal. We'll, we'll see well, if Bob has anything to say. We'll mic him up. Now Lacroix with the shot. That saved there by Benedetto. So it's still 1-0 Eagles. Another shot. That gets blocked in front. Puck's still in the Nobody wants to area get there. Now DeShondo with it. Erdley, his shot, save Benedetto, rebound, and there a goal! They got it now. They count that one. No one's going to wave that goal off as we are tied at one. And it looks like that's number 10, Raphael LaCours with the goal. And so Hurst uh, picking up their play a bit, and they have tied this game at one. They like the buzz, I'll tell you. They just didn't let the Eagles get a chance to get out of their old zone. They were on the puck. They weren't waiting for the puck to come to them. They are jumping all over yeah. it, and it paid off. Well, you know, credit Hurst, they didn't get frustrated about that. They probably got more motivated. We'll get the call from Bob. Interested to hear this pronunciation from him. Could be interesting. Now here's Waddell. He thought he scored a goal just about 30 Modern seconds Jack ago. Cole scored by number 10, Raphael LaCour. Assist, number 44, Matthew Erdley. The time of that goal, 13.05. So LaCour's from Erdley, and we're tied at one. 12.35 to play in this first period. He goes with the puck along the end boards. Zach Johnson. Now behind the net. Morich. Morich to Johnson. Now he had it taken away from him. Cleared to center. Now here's Blair. Quickly. Back up the ice. Blair in. Blair shot. Save. Juggled. And oh boy, oh Blair boy. goes in hard to the net. He's okay. That one looks scary there for a moment. Yeah. Thank God those nets move. Yeah, boy. That's one occasion you want them to move. Got that right. And they will have a face off. In the Hurst zone, the Sioux Greyhounds, Larry, off to a very good start this season. Winners last night at Windsor. They are in action again tonight. As Greyhounds. they are at Kitchener, up 2-0 on the Rangers. Never wow. an easy place to play. No. Kitchener's were number one in that uh, the division, I believe. I think, that, yeah, in the other division, you're right. Hounds number one in their division. Lake Spear State University, Lakers, they're in action at Alabama Huntsville. That game starts a little bit later, though. Now Tallarico behind it, almost misplayed that puck. The Lumberjacks will clear it down the ice. No, nice there pass. Here's a two-on-one. Hurst in, her shot, and a goal! Nice play he made there. Plays Arkel with the nice individual effort, and no bust lag for this squad tonight, Larry. They no. lead by the score of 2-1 to one with 11.51 to play here in the first period. That's a nice goal, as you're going to see. That, that was a pretty goal, really. He... he he did tricks with that puck. Sure did, as uh, Blaze Arkel will give the Lumberjacks a 2-1 to lead. It was a two-on-one, and Arkel got that puck, and boy, he couldn't have done any more with that than he just did. We'll get the call from Bob. Visitors up by one. Eagles with the puck in their own zone. Cleared to center. And down the ice. Tallarico. Goal scored go. by number 13, Blaze Arkel. Assist, number 29, Nicholas Tallarico. Goaltender. Time of the goal, 11.51. Yeah. I almost think there'd be another assist on that one, but maybe they'll change that later on. Puck back into the Lumberjack zone. Tallarico behind the net. And shot down into the Eagle zone. Richard Bulware. Pass over to Schwab. We got icing that one there. Goes down the ice, and it'll be an icing call with 11:05 to play here in the first period. Larry, we have our stump the pause trivia question this period. <laughs> now, those at home can play if they know the answer. Tweet me s nason two zero one three. And this question is again: the Sioux Eagles franchise goes franchise goes back all the way to two the early two thousands with the Northern Michigan Black Bears and the Sioux Indians. And the question I have is: who is the all time franchise leader? in games played for this Sioux Eagles franchise. All-time leader played. for games played. I will say he's been within the last few years, and that'll be my hint. Now shot back down the ice in the Hearst zone. We'll give you a few minutes to think about I'm that thinking. one. You want me to think? <laughs> well, <laughs> can always be dangerous, I guess, but we'll, we'll take our chances tonight here. As Birdall with oh, an and a goal. On. 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's one Benedetto would like to have back, Larry, as the Hearst Lumberjacks now lead by the score of 3-1. to one. And one thing I've been impressed with, they brought a, a, quite a few visiting fans here making the long trek south. And they're pretty happy with what, they're very happy with what they see is. Really? That one, uh, I think Benedetto would like to have back. We'll yeah, get, we'll timeout. Get, Eagles, call, uh, our Eagles are calling a timeout. Well, that's a good timeout by Coach LaProd. I mean, the Eagles, the first four or five minutes were playing well, but, you know, I don't think it's as much the Eagles aren't playing well. It's just Hurst has really put their foot on the pedal here the last they few have. minutes. They have. So we'll see who the third goal will go to. It happened so fast, Larry. I'm not quite sure who got that one. Here we go. I think they'll say it until the play starts, but let's look at the goal for Hurst. Their second goal, as I mentioned, was scored by Blaze Arkel, his first, and the goal by LaCours, his fourth. Out of town, a scoreboard, Larry. It's now 2-0. Timmons over Blind River, early second period in Blind River. Still no score between Rayside, Balfour, and Espinola, that one in the first period, and it's a 2-2 tie in Powassan between the Kirkland Lake Gold Miners and the Powassan Voodoo. So, Larry, do you have any ideas on who the all-time leading Sioux Eagles player is Brian before Depp. games played. Now, good guess, but no. Jake Saxton. Oh, yes. Yep, Saxton he, played a he long played, time. He played, he played, what, three, four years? Four yeah, years. He played, yeah, he played a long time. I'm looking at the total games here. I had it a moment ago, but we'll get Number 25, J.J. Birdall. 25. Assist, number 29, Nicholas Pellerico. Wow. The time of the goal. Guys, 10, keeps 30, getting an assist. Two assists from the goaltender in one period. That hasn't happened much. Now you know why he's in net. Now a shot and a save wow. there. That almost went in. Eagles don't want to give up another one here. Hurst all over the home team right now. Now Lamberti over in the far corner. Lumberjacks with the puck. And this is the fifth place team in the east taking on the fifth place team in the west. And right now east is best yet again. Eagles with the puck. A lot of hockey to play here. Butcher at center ice. Across the blue line, he shoots it in. Tallarico behind his net. Plays it off the near boards. We'll have immediate timeout, we think, on the next whistle, barring a penalty, and that's going to be a offside. offside. Now we're going to get some pleasant trees exchange, and we're going to have a media timeout, we think, with 9.35 to play in this first period. Shots 10-5, Lumberjacks. They lead by the score of 3-1. to one. So we do have a media timeout, yeah. Larry. So why don't you tell us about some of our well, let's, fantastic let's Sioux Eagle sponsors or whatever the heck you want to talk about. Okay, I'm going to let tell the me. people know. We, we, they can bid on a jersey. Okay. I'll give them that again. Uh, call your bid in at our text, 1-906-322-3330. And it starts at $100. Let them know what, what, guy, what young man you want, uh, what jersey you want. And starts at 100 at $5 increments. I'm sure they'll tell you when you call in if there's somebody already bid on and what they have bid. So go from there. And uh, Larry, I'm sure, will do due diligence and head down to the lobby between periods to maybe give some updates as far as those jerseys, especially tomorrow for those jerseys yes. that aren't, uh, aren't selected yet. How about some of our great sponsors, Larry? Who are some of the people that support Sioux Eagles hockey? All right. Law Office of William Dyke Justin. Sioux St. Marie, Michigan Convention and Visitors Bureau. CSB, Central Savings Bank. Now we got a bunch of them there. St. Ignis, Detour, Mackinac Island, Pickford, Rudyard, Cedarville, Kinross, Drummond, and two in Sioux St. Marie downtown and I-75 business. Brand new location in the, on the business spur. Beautiful building. You have to go in there and see. Back to live action as the media timeout is over. Hurst with the puck leading by two. Now the Lumberjacks with it. Griffin plays it off the boards. Picked up by Roth. Hurst has had a very effective four check tonight so far. They have. Now the and Eagles clear cold. the zone. Praisner, who has the only goal for the Eagles. Puck still in the slot. Shot out by the Lumberjacks. Now at the point of shot, save. That one got through and Tallarico had to make the save. Now Schwab at the point, his shot misses the net. Praisner on the rebound. Shot, save, rebound. Oh, the net's off the moorings. That one wouldn't have gone in either way, but Eagles with a good scoring opportunity there. Yep. Eagles started to press a little bit, but uh, they didn't come up with anything. 8.58 to play in this first period. 3-1 in favor of the Lumberjacks. Eagles don't want to get any further behind uh, in this first period. Right. 
the Orfanos to take the draw. On the far boards. Buck picked up there by Shire. Now Johnson, pass over to Blair. Now Blair behind the net, now Puck goes over. Hurst will clear that one down the ice, bouncing Puck, picked up by Pace, good job by Blair to ride him out of the play. Now pass, nice pass there, goes right to Blair. Johnson with the pass, Blair with the shot and a safe rebound. No, they're not gonna count that one as Blair gets knocked down. He was going for the puck, but he ended up hitting the goaltender, so the light is on, Larry, but that yeah. one definitely will not count. No, the whistle had blown. And let's hope our uh, the Hearst netminder is okay. He got ran into by Blair pretty hard. I don't think there was intent. He was going for the puck, but he might get a penalty out of he's, this one. He's getting one, so is, the, uh, so is the Hearst player, I think. I thought the Hearst player was getting one that hit him down. I think they're just going to call that on Blair. Cool. It's going to be an elbowing call. No, they call it interference. Or interference, okay, either way. Hurst likely to get the first power play here of the night. So the Eagles have evened up the shot. It looks like they took a shot away from the uh, Hurst Lumberjacks. It was 10-5, and all of a sudden it's 9-9. I don't know how that works, but... 10-5. Yeah, it was 10-5 at one point there at the time. Oh, I know, they took a shot away. They must have added some, too, 10-5, and it's 9-9. Well, yeah, because the Eagles had five, and then they just got four shots. So that's where you get the nine. Well, you didn't say that. Well, no, I said 10 it, 5, and well, now it's 9 9. Right. The, the question I had was, well, how did they take a shot away? Eagles had five. They just got four shots, Larry. Five plus four, I think, is nine. That yeah, works in right, Canada, no. right? But the, the question I had is the Eagles. I understand that. 10. Okay. Well, what's the confusion here? The confusion was 10 5, and all at once I'm looking up, and it's 9 9. I didn't believe they got four shots gotcha. right away. I thought you were questioning my math. No, no. Okay. Okay. I'm going to say, I don't think it's the Celsius Fahrenheit thing that we're discussing here. I figured Matt <laughs> Only was one guy got it last week. <laughs> You're right. Nobody at home or anything. Brendan Blair, two minutes. Goaltender interference. So goaltender interference. The call on Hurst, or on uh, Blair, rather. Now LaCroix. At the point. LaCroix, excuse me. DeSando, his shot. Pass, rather, goes over to Griffin. Now Griffin. Pass on the near point. Picked up by Clark. Now the Eagles cleared down the ice. And they go for a line change. Under eight to play in this first period. 3-1 Hurst. Now Griffin across the blue line. The rapid hard off the boards. Picked up by Clark. Now the Eagles have it. They'll clear it to center. Chance for Jensen. He'll just backhand the puck into the Hurst zone. Lumberjacks with the puck. Under a minute on the power play. Yep, 55 seconds left on the power play. Dangerous play there by DeSando. Good right four checking his own by net. Jensen. Yeah. Lumberjacks with it. Another chance in front. He's got to be careful on those. As LaCroix with it. LaCroix passes it over. Now kept in at the blue line. Picked up by Fisher. Fisher over to Clark. Now Clark. Down low. Fisher. Fisher edge of the far circle. Now back to the point. LaCroix with the shot. Saved there by Benedetto. Rebound. Goes over to the far boards. Now LaCour's with it. As Hurst gets a player out there late. Just coming off the bench. Ten seconds left on the power play. LaCour's on the near side. Golant with it. Lost it, picked up by the Eagles, and that'll do it for the power play. That one goes down the ice, Whoa. shot on net there as it took a funny bounce as Tallarico handles that. And the Eagles at full strength. Now the Lumberjacks with it. McDonald. Pass. Fisher. Puck in the slot. Dangerous one. That goes wide. Eagles try to clear it out of the zone. Kept in by Hurst. Boy, their forecheck has been good this first period. Yeah, it is, it really. McDonald to Gallant. Eagles still can't clear it. They get more fresh players out there and keep it in the Eagles zone. Now the Eagles. Schwab at center ice. Shot in by Wood. Now right back out by the Lumberjacks. Morich with it in his own zone. Bad pass broken up. Right below our broadcast position. 
Blair with the puck. Rink wide pass to Roth. Shoots it back to the Kirkland, or Kirkland Lake. Hurst zone. Got the gold miners on the mind, apparently. Now shot back in by the Eagles. Puck at the blue line. Roth. Now the Lumberjacks. With the puck, Young. Kept alive by the Eagles. A shot and a save there by Tallarico as Kyle Quinn had a good opportunity, but he shot it right into the goaltender's pads and he makes the save. Yeah. No room to get around him. A couple of more sponsors. Uh, find my page here. Northern Michigan Insurance Agency. Oh, Alex Rook. Yeah. Assistant Associate Coach of Chippewa County Credit Union. Buckle on the far boards. Eagles with it. Quinn shot. I do have to make a mention in the oh. second period. Now, good chance there by the Eagles player. That was Prasner with the chance and a save there by Tallarico. Now it's center ice. Puck broken up there by Quinn. Would you say 11 is LaCroix or LaCroix, Larry? If you looked at number 11, I've, I've called it twice, two different ways. How would you, how would you go there? We'll go LaCroix. No. LaCroix. LaCroix. All right, we'll go that. It's more French anyway. Right. Now Schwab with it. That one deflects into the netting, and we'll have a face-off in the Hurst zone with a 4.15 to play here in the first period. While we have a moment, let's take a look at our out-of-town scoreboard. Blind River has gotten one goal on Timmins as they trail 2-1. to one. Halfway through the second period, no score after one. Espinola and Rayside Balfour in a 2-2 tie between Kirkland Lake and Powassan. 3-1 Hurst here, 4-10 to play in this first period as we have an icing call. The Lake Superior State University Laker hockey team with the long road trip. Oh, geez, 16 hours <laughs> road trip down to Alabama. And they're taking oh, on that's Alabama why. Huntsville. Yep, that'll start here in okay. a couple minutes. Fair State up at home against Alaska Anchorage, 1-0. And no score in the second period. Bemidji State in Northern Michigan. Now Hurst is going to get a penalty. And that's going to be either a cross check or a trip. We'll call it a trip, trip. and so that's going to go on Moran. So the right Eagles you will are. go on the power play. And Larry looking around Polar State, and we had 965 fans here no. on Saturday. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was. Well, they had a lot of kids activities, oh. and uh, we did play a, an exhibition game. And let's just say that everybody won but me. Oh. So uh, <laughs> now, now, whose turn is it to give the attendance next period? I think I got to do that. I think I, so, I, I and I'm guess, up yeah. three two. Correct. Yes, you are. All right, so you'll give You're the attendance. You're rubbing that in, aren't I you? I am. Yeah. I have to because I haven't been up much. We'll get the call from Bob on the penalty. The lumberjack penalty to number four. No, you got Justin that, Myron, yes. two minutes tripping. The time of the penalty, 4.04. So tripping the call. Eagles on the power play. Back to the point. Schwab shot. That deflects wide. Thought I did last time. No, you said lower. I said 513. You okay. said lower, 503. Okay. Well, then I will give the guess in the second period. Larry has a chance to tie it. If this is a oh, seven. Wait a minute. I said low. Sorry, uh -huh. Larry. Okay. Uh -huh. I put the check that you won, yeah. Uh -huh. well, fake news there, Larry. So you'll give the guess, and I'll say higher or lower. If this is a seven game series, I have a chance to clinch it tonight. I got to check this out. I can't even read my own <laughs> writing here. <laughs> Minute 10 left on the Eagles' power play. As Wood shoots it in. Eagles yet to really set this power play up. As Hurst with the puck. Don't clear the zone. And that's going to be offside as Schwab gets hit hard. If you want to know more about the local sports scene here in the Eastern Upper Peninsula and the Central Algoma region, make sure you find our sports show, or I should say my sports show, The Game. And you can find it at thegamesportshow.com or thegamesportshow.podbean.com. We talk a lot about the Sioux Eagles, the NLJHL high Holy school sports. Oh God, he's kicked out. That's why you're right here, guys. I didn't see what happened there, Larry. I, I just saw the ending where he got knocked down by one of the Hearst players and then the linesman went over and said something to the referee and pointed over at- uh, That's Hanawal. Hanawal, yeah. So he is... Uh, He's gone. They kick him out as uh, Coach Doug LaPrade has an exasperated look on his face over there. 
I was giving my advertisement there, and I didn't catch a whole lot of what happened there. Eagles were set to get the penalty. And, well, it looks like they're going to get a lot more than that. They're going to get a player ejected already. Kind of short-staffed, Larry, with the players serving this three-game suspensions. They only dress 19, so it looks like they're going to be one player more short. Okay, well, we got a break here. I can give you some <laughs> We've sponsors. had a lot of these lately, yeah, haven't really, we? Yeah, really, yeah. Going through this year thing. Uh, FAN, F-A-N, that's Families Against Narcotics. We've got EUP, Eastern Upper Peninsula News, Art Van and Erickson Appliance. We'll save some for later. Art Vandelay? <laughs> Art Vandelay. <laughs> Vandelay Industries. Vandelay Industries. He's an importer-exporter. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't live here. You got the wrong number. <laughs> Uh, and he comes running out of the bathroom, yeah, the, 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 his pants on his ankles. Yeah, for those that don't know, we reference Seinfeld a lot during the action. Probably haven't too much this season, but no. we normally do. Uh, so the referees are having some more discussions with the captain. It looks like at least two minutes on the board, Larry, but I believe uh, Hannah Wall's night is done as uh, one of our officials gave him the heave-ho. And we'll uh, hear what the call is. Would this be an um, unsportsmanlike uh, ejection? I didn't see much as uh, far as... It could be a mis game misconduct or something by the official. I don't know. Uh, let's hear. First of all, let's see what the call is. And uh, like I say, I just lost. I only saw uh, the players were moving around after the whistle had blown. And one of the Hearst players knocked him down. And then that's when the, the linesman over at the referee, and I thought he was going to say something about the Hearst player, and, and he pointed over at the Eagles bench. And that's when uh, the referee went over there, and, and that's when the handle wall just went, he wasn't happy. We'll get the call here. Eagle penalty to number six, Charlie Hangawall. Two minutes Wait, for unsportsmanlike conduct plus a game misconduct. Now, here we go. Now we have a few more players getting involved. And, well, we've seen a lot of this this season, Larry, as far as uh, some rough stuff. And, well, it appears to be happening again tonight. Yeah. So Hannah Wall, two for unsportsmanlike conduct and a game misconduct. So you must really have said something. My youngest son, Vance, is on the – or my oldest son, Vance, is at the scores table – I hope he's heard some of these words. <laughs> I'm sure he has. He's in middle school, but yeah, thanks, Rob. I appreciate you giving him something to do, though. He was, yeah, yeah he was he's got to be more. happier than a pig in. Oh, that's fun to be down there. Are you oh, really? Me? So a penalty on Hurst, Larry, a four on three for the Eagles. We'll Eagle get the call again. Eight to number six. Hang a wall. Two minutes on sportsmanlike conduct. He goes on the power play. We already heard that Time one. That penalty, 3-0-1. They're at the point. Now Lumberjack penalty save. to number 21, George Young. Two minutes roughing. The time of the penalty to 51. So the Eagles have a four on three for 35 seconds. It'll be four on four hockey for minute 38. And then the Eagles will have a brief 10 second power play if it gets to that. They got to start shooting more. No, this one, that just killed a lot of time. Shot down the ice. Benedetto behind the net. Eagles with it. Butcher. Blair gets run into. Butcher has it. Lots of room out there on a four on three. Butcher across the blue line. Pass on the near side to Scarella. Now moving in Butcher's pass behind Scarella. He gets knocked down. Another penalty on Hurst. And so now uh, well, we're going to. There's going to be a delay here now. Yeah, there'll be a five second and then it'll put another two minutes on there. So this will keep the four on three alive for yeah. another minute and change. And the Eagles will have a five on four. So that penalty box getting rather crowded for Hurst. Not a lot of room to begin with in these polar penalty boxes. You can fit three on the bench. So it's going to be five seconds. Then yep. it still stays a five. It'll stay a four, four on three again. It should be four on three for a little over a minute. Yep. And then the Eagles will go on a, a five on four power play. Well, it'll be a brief five on three for about ten seconds. Yep. A lot of math tonight, Larry. My goodness sakes. Number Jack penalty to number 11, Maxim LaCroix. Two minutes holding. The a shot there and a save. Good shot by Blair. Eagles 
Lee in the shot totals right now, 13 to 10. As we have a minute 59 left here in this first period, kind of been a long first period. Yeah. Eagles have to do more shooting now. They got a four on three, and they're going to have five on. They're going to have a four on three for a while. They got to take more shots. That's the first shot they've had since this four on three. Face off, won by the Eagles. Praise their shot. It. Misses the near side. So now the other penalty has started. Still a four on three. Player doesn't come out of the box. Chance in front of shot. Oh, nice, nice setup. Deflection by Blair just goes wide. Ortega can't clear it for Hurst. Now Blair back to the point. Over Butcher. His shot that hits uh, Erdley goes off the high boards. Or high glass, I should say, and shot down the ice. 30 seconds left on the four on three. Then we'll have a very brief five on three. Across the blue line, Morich. Morich behind the net. He gets knocked down. You wouldn't expect there to be another penalty there. That one gets shot down the ice. Butcher has it. So 10 seconds left on the Eagles penalty. So they'll get a player out there quickly, but the Eagles got to move the puck. Here's Scarella. So now a five on three for the Eagles. Across the blue line. Chance, but the Lumberjacks will shoot it down the ice, and that'll do it for the five on three. So now it'll be a five on four for the remainder of this first period. Unless the Eagles score. No cannon. Can't clear it out. Now he does. Eagles pick it up. Across the blue line. Eagles still in the power play. Wood over to Schwab. Nice pass. Moving in. Fumbling the puck, though, was Jensen. That shot goes high. Puck on the near boards, kept in by Schwab nicely. Now Wood falls down but passes it over. Off the boards. That's Jensen. He winds and fires. Save there by Tallarico. And that one's going to go way out of play. Look out. Almost hits the big boys over there. Hey, they he got did. another one for Chuckapuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's a practice one. Oh, oh he's there you go. Yeah. Look at these guys. Yeah, they got enough pucks over yeah, there. Really. I don't give that. Oh, oh he's oh, throwing it back. He throws it back. <laughs> <on>. <laughs> <laughs> He thinks he's at a ball game. <laughs> That's right. You, you don't have to give it back. Oh, yeah, run and hide. <laughs> no, now his dad saying, I'm going <laughs> to... 12 seconds left on the power play. 15 seconds to play here in the first period. And then it'll be shot down the ice. So the Eagles got out to a one nothing lead in this first period, Larry, but Hurst with three strikes in the first 10 minutes of this period. And they are going to go into the first intermission break with a 3-1 to one lead. Eagles got a lot of work to do. We'll be back for the second period here on Hockey TV. Scott Nason, Larry Pazabon back at Puller Stadium in downtown Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan on this Friday night. As we have a 3-1 Hurst Lumberjack lead over the Sioux Eagles after one period of play before we recap the scoring in the second period. Larry, your thoughts on the first? I'll tell you something. I'll tell you, this Hurst team came to play hockey. They got excellent forechecking. They move the puck well. They know how to take a player out. I'll tell you, uh, they're up 3-1. They deserve it. They're, they're, a good, they're a good hockey team, and they're in fifth place in the other division. We're in fifth place in our division, but this team has come to play now. I'm not sure. If, if they had road leagues, they left them someplace on the road because they don't have them here on the ice. Recapping the scoring, Larry, in that second period, the Eagles got off to a 1-0 lead early in the first period as... Raph Prasner scored his fourth goal of the season at the 314 mark of the period with assists from Riley Jensen and Brendan Blair. And then Hurst would score three goals in a little under two and a half minutes. The 655 mark, Raphael LaCour scored with an assist from Matthew Erdley. His fourth of the season, Blake Arkel scored his first goal of the season at the 809 mark with an assist from goaltender Nicholas Tallarico. And then J.J. Berdahl would score his first goal of the season. Another assist from the goaltender, Nicholas Terrarico. Larry, I've been doing hockey quite a while. I can't ever remember a, a, a period where a goaltender's had two assists. Uh, me neither. You know, I'll tell you, uh, that's, that's rather unusual. Yeah. It definitely is. Shots on goal in that first period, 15-10 to 10 in favor of the Lumberjacks. And so the Eagles have a uh, big hill to climb right now as they trail by the score of three to one want to say hello to linda quinn and family that are watching tonight chris and linda quinn and uh quinn family make sure you stick around here and listen the first half of the period because uh, i have something that your son did on the ice but away from the eagles that i thought was very cool 
uh, talking about that. And tuning in is Don Supa, our uh, good friend from Sugar Island, and his daughter Chloe and wife Stephanie watching tonight from Sugar Island. And uh, good timing, Don, because I was just about to mention to uh, the Quinn family and others uh, something that happened earlier this week that I thought was really cool. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, that's, I was surprised. I was looking for Dawn up here in the little They're coming grove. tomorrow night. They're tomorrow coming night? tomorrow okay. night. Yep, they're, they're home watching tonight on Hockey TV. Now here's the Eagles trailing by two. On the near boards, center ice, picked up by Quinn. Now Quinn two on one. Quinn and Prasner a shot and a save there. Another chance there for the Eagles behind the net. That's Quinn getting knocked down. Good start for the Eagles in this first period. A lot of life out there right now. Now Blair keeps it in. Around the boards, Jensen. Now Lacroix plays it over for Erdley. Now that puck. That's center ice. Taken there by the Lumberjacks. Clark into the Eagles zone. Defense by Blair. Knocks him off the puck. Now kept in by the Lumberjack. Eagles finally clear it. Lacroix with it. He's going to roof that one into the Eagles zone. Blair calmly... Knocks that aside. Now Schwab at center ice. Schwab with the puck. Cross the blue line. Shot and gloved down there by Tallarico in a hold. Now Larry, I was mentioning number 13 for the Eagles. Kyle Quinn and number 18, Raph Praisner. They were two of the Eagles that helped out some youth hockey on Wednesday night. Our, our good friend Don Supa's daughter is in first year level hockey and she was on the ice and uh, Kyle Quinn and Raph Praisner were out there and there are many Eagles that were out there but they were the two specifically that were helping out uh, many of the youngsters and Chloe Supa in this case a uh, shot and a save there off the face off we'll have another one left of the goaltender but uh, Don wanted to give a special shout out to those two who really just her, her, his daughter's eyes were just lit up <laughs> and that's one of the things that you know as a hockey player growing up in this town anytime you got some of the bigger kids to Go help out those sort of oh, things. I think is they very just eat good. that up. Those little kids, they yep. just, their eyes, like you say, their eyes just glow. So I know the Quinn family and uh, Mrs. Prazer now a chance and a shot and a save. Waited there. too long. Eagles with another chance and another save there by Tallarico. So the Prazer family and Quinn family, uh, kudos to your sons, made a young lady's day on the ice and only will help her in her hockey development. So just wanted to get that out because I know the parents are listening. So kudos to them. Right, and one of them's here tonight. That's well, right. He can't, yeah. he, he can't hear us, but I'm sure his wife will text or we'll, call We'll pass him. that along when he comes yep. up at the second period. Yes. Shots now 20-11, Larry, in favor of the Eagles. At one point it was 10-5 in favor of Hearst. The Eagles. want to go through that again? No, we don't. <laughs> we, you're going to confuse me even more, but well, let's just say the Eagles have outshot them as of late <laughs> okay. and leave it at that. Now puck in the Hearst zone. Over on the far boards. Eagles with the puck. They shoot it in. Now back down the ice. Chased down by Butcher. Eagles started out the first period much like they've started out the second period. Then right. Hurst had those three quick goals. And the Lumberjacks with it in the Eagles zone. Garatuga with it. His shot oh. and a glove save there by Joe Benedetto. He had to really sprawl out for that one, and now we have some more of uh, the unpleasantries exchanged. Now, Larry, pink in the rink. Jerseys auctioned off all weekend. They will end the auctioning at the second intermission tomorrow, and we'll get the information on the next I, whistle. I've got some information. Okay. You got, got some, some information. Now, yeah, some jerseys that are open. Okay. Go ahead. Well, You can go through the play. They're watching, so you okay. tell us. Uh, ones that are open for the Eagles, uh, 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 17, 18, 19, 22, 24, 26, number 1, number 29, that's it. Those are all open. There's a lot of them open. All right, there. so again, you can get those bids in. Now the Eagles with the puck. Praisner centering chance. Goes to the stick of Page. Oh, again, more physical play, and the Eagles uh -oh. player gets knocked there. I think that's Blair. He got hit up high at the blue line, and nothing was called as Kerry Evie, the trainer for the Eagles, comes out on the ice quickly. Uh, Blair's slow to get up. He got hit up high. Looked like he got hit in the mouth, and he's... 
Is he bleeding? There? They, they got to show some blood there. I don't know if he's bleeding. Yes, he is. I spit something out there, we could tell. Oh, yeah, there is a little bit of a, a colored spit, if you will. Yeah, yeah. It looks like Blair is okay, and the referee's there. Advance Nason down there at the scorer's table. Learn, learn, learn of the ropes from Ken Aikens, our yeah. scorekeeper. He's, he's having a blast. You're right, Larry. He's loving it down there. I talked to him when I was going by, down. He was going by. He says, yeah, he says they're teaching me the stats. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay, what's happening here? Okay, the faceoff is going to be outside. So face off outside the Hearst blue line with 1646 to play in the second period. Lumberjacks with a three to one lead. We'll look at some of the other scores here on the next whistle. Deshondo at the blue line. Now LaCour shoots it in. LaCour gets his own rebound. Off the high glass behind the net, picked up by the Eagles. Now puck on the near boards. Eagles break it loose, Morich. Morge, pass almost connected with Wood. Now the Lumberjacks have it. LaCours at his own blue line. Pass it up to Griffin. Now Griffin's pass right to the stick to Deshondo. Puck loose in the slot. Schwab tries to get it out. Chance, and that goes wide. Wood with the puck. Bad pass. Another turnover, a shot. That hits the defender there, I think, Schwab. Eagles, too many defensive turnovers, Larry. Just not able to clear the zone. There's again. Now kept in by Hurst. Again, credit this Lumberjacks four check. One of the best I've seen this year at the puller. Eagles with the puck. Morich gets run into. Now at center ice. Wood has it across the blue line. Wood with the puck. Over at the far boards. Pinching in his Shire. Now Parrott trying to get that puck. Shot to center ice. Lamberti. Lamberti to Butcher. That one's going to be flipped into the Hearst zone. Waddell gets hit hard behind the net. Almost thought that could have been a it looked, checking yeah, from behind. But very close. Very close indeed. Puck in the neutral zone. Lamberti had it for a moment. Now Young trying to get that puck. Shire chips it into the Lumberjack zone. Five minutes gone by in this second period. Still 3-1 in favor of the visiting Hearst Lumberjacks. Their first and only visit here to Puller Stadium during the regular season. Now Myron with the puck. Waddell for the Lumberjacks. The Eagles trying to get a little four check of their own. Lamberti over there. Kept in by Parrott. Now Parrott shoots it in. Waddell. Now the Eagles with the ones. Four checking a bit. Kept in there by Butcher. Nice job. Waddell behind the net. Now Waddell. Poke checked away. He gets knocked down. Fans want a penalty. None called. Shot, block, or save. And that'll get the puck out of play. And we'll have a face-off. While we have a moment, Larry, let's look at the out-of-town scoreboard. Okay. In the NOJHL, Blind River is now leading Timmins 3-2 after two periods of play in Blind River. Rayside Balfour leading, Balfour rather, leading Espinola 3-1. Late second period in a 2-2 tie between Kirkland Lake and and the Powassan Voodoos, the Sioux Greyhounds on the road tonight at Kitchener. They lead by the score of 4-2. to two. In the second period, Lake Spear State University on the road leads at Alabama Huntsville 1-0 after one period of play. The undefeated Lakers, Larry. Granted, they're 2-0, and oh, but it's undefeated. They'll take it. <laughs> the seasons really? they've had lately. Now shot back into the Hurst end. Buckle on the near boards. Eagles with it. Praisner trying to get it over to that's Jensen, now Jensen. Plays it over to the far boards. Quinn with it. Quinn back to Jensen. Rather check that, that's Praisner. Praisner gets knocked down. Lacroix with the puck. In front of his own net, now he'll skate it out of the zone. Lacroix at center ice, he'll flip it in. Stick side there by Roth. Now shot right back in by the Lumberjacks. Blair. Picks up the puck at center ice. Brendan Blair across the blue line. Blair with a shot oh. and a goal! The 
Blair family all across the United States watching in three different locations like that one as Blair, boy, he finds some speed to get into the zone and he just found the far side. Get a little more net to shoot at, Larry, with the maybe not so big goaltender and Blair makes him pay. And the Eagles have cut the lead to one with 13.09 to play here in the second period. That is a big goal. That is a very big, big goal. We'll get the call from Bob it's St. Peter. It's 2 instead of 4-1. Yep. Goals, good, good math. Seven, Brandon Blair. Assist number 16, Lucas Roth. Time of that goal, 13.09. Now here we go, Larry. We're going to have a penalty. I didn't see what happened. It was kind of out of my view, but it looks like, again, the Eagles... Undisciplined. Undisciplined indeed. Just when they had some momentum and it looked like things were going their way. Uh, Brett Morich, I couldn't quite Ruffy. see what happened, but it looked like a little bit of a rough. And so that's going to give Hurst the power play opportunity with 12.56 to play here in the second period. Larry, coming up here in a few minutes, it's our world-famous Guess the Attendance game where you will be guessing the attendance tonight here at Polar Stadium, myself and those at home can play on Twitter. Just tweet me S Nason 2013. We'll talk more later. Eagle goals going by number 7. Blair. Still getting Assist the goal. Number 16. Roth. The time of that goal. 13.09. Eagle penalty to number 22. Brett Moritz. Two minutes roughing. So roughing the call on Moritz. Lumberjacks on their second power play. The rough gets knocked down over the near corner. A few fans like that one. Fans, I might add. Now puck at center ice as we have a broken stick out there, Larry. Cue the commercial coming up here. Lumberjacks on the power play. Still a minute 20 left on it. LaCours across the blue line. Now LaCours, he gets knocked down. Fortin with the puck for the Lumberjacks. Now Fortin plays over the far boards. First trying to set it up. DeSando at the point, his shot. That deflects wide by Griffin. Now the Eagles pick up the puck and shoot it down the ice. 55 seconds left on the power play. Shots 21-12 in favor of the Eagles, but they trail by one. Now here's McDonald with a centering chance. That goes over the stick of the Hurst player. Now DeSondo at the point. That one goes behind the net. McDonald with the puck. Two Hurst players in that far corner. One gets knocked down. Now here's Hurst with the chance in front. Now taken away by Parrott. Kept in by Bird. All his shot. Save Benedetto. Rebound. And that one stays into the Eagles zone. 20 seconds left on the power play. Puck over in the far corner. Fisher. Fisher with the puck. Fisher. Broken up there by Jensen. The Eagles clear. It might have a two on one. Here's Jensen to Lamberti. Jensen across the blue line. Over to Lamberti. Hit shot. Oh, a save there. I thought that one was going wide, but the goaltender made the save. We're going to have a penalty, I think. And is this one going on the Eagles as well? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, both of them. Okay, they're both going. I said the Eagles player touched the puck, and I didn't think that was going to be a one. Is uh, Jensen now having some words? Okay, I'm going to go in here now with uh, Fix Your Stick. Folks. Yes, Back yes. home, Fix Your Stick. Uh, get a hold of the Rob Horn at the uh, same number that uh, if you want to put a bit on a jersey, 906-322-3330. $30, Fix Your Stick, any part of your stick, a goalie stick also, and guaranteed for one month. And I tell you, that. it works. I've seen I've seen some of the sticks that he's done for the Eagles. Good job. I don't know where Rob gets all his talents. I mean, he has so many. It's just hard to imagine one guy can have so many talents. I'm trying to even up is, from is the earlier talents. Is that like claws talents you're talking about? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we do. There you go, Larry. We got uh, the oh, extra. I'll hold you yeah, back. Right, I'll, right. I just <laughs> well, Larry, the extra two on the board for the Eagles. So oh. it does look like they're going to get the uh, disadvantage here. So Hurst right back to the power play. So Eagles got to keep things under under control here tonight. They're, they're edging their way back in this game, Larry, but you can only give a team so many opportunities on the power play. Eventually they're going to get one in. We'll get the call from Bob. He's been busy tonight. Lumberjack penalty to number 25, J.J. Birdall. Two minutes roughing. 
to the Sioux Eagles to number 20, 21, Riley Jensen. Four minutes for roughing. All right, so Jensen oh. gets the extra two. Hurst on the power play. They lead by one, 10.30 to play in the second period. Number Jackson with the puck. Pass, rink wide on the near side to DeSando. DeSando gets it back to LaCroix. Now here's a chance for Hurst in front. That one deflects just wide. And nice job there by Schwab to clear the zone. Minute 20 left on the power play. Chasing it is Blair. He had the last Eagles goal. Nice job by him to shoot it down the ice. Think about Brendan Blair, Larry. He, I, I'd say he's one of the more consistent Eagles players. He comes to play every night. Yes, you're right. He, do, he doesn't miss a lot of shifts. He's And that's why he's wearing the C. Now here's Griffin with it. Over to LaCroix. 50 seconds left on the power play. LaCroix at the point. His shot. That misses the net. Rebound goes to DeSando. Now DeSando shot. Blocker save there, Benedetto. Rebound goes over to LaCroix. That one's going to go off the high glass. Bounce behind the net. Now to the near side. Butchered. Could get a handle on the puck to try to clear it. Hurst still on the power play. 30 seconds left on it. Lumberjacks with the puck. Back to the point. LaCroix doesn't get a whole lot on that shot. And the Eagles are able to clear it down the ice. Everybody's changing all over the place. Yep. Lamberti. And on the four check. Oh, he knocks the goaltender into the boards. Almost thought maybe something there. Now the Hurst player takes exception. Oh. There's a big slash there. And they let it go. And they let that one go. My goodness. Now here's Gallant with it. Even a back mind didn't call it. Gallant. Pass. Fisher. Shot. Oh, Whoa. what a save by Benedetto. He read that one like a Stephen Whoa. King novel and makes the save with two seconds left on the power play. That was big. Wow. That was big. That was label, and he put the glove up there. It sure was. Wow. So chalk that save down as a big moment in this game. As that one goes in, it's 4-2 Hurst on the power play. As uh, Coach Doug LaProte having some words with Jake Lamberti there, getting into the action. Now a quick shot off the face. Off that goes wide. He goes back at full strength. We'll have a media timeout on the next timeout, or next whistle, I should say. Now the Eagles with it. They clear the zone. That one goes down the ice, and no icing. They wave that one off. Hurst with the puck. The big hit there by the Eagles. Now a chance in front of shot. That would have been a nice goal there. Now here we go as uh, the goaltender get a little feisty there. Tallarico. Yeah. As uh, he uh, got involved there with one of the Eagles players. So we should have immediate timeout, Larry. 8.32 to play in this second period as uh, this game is really picking up in intensity. It's 3-2, Hurst. So, Larry, do you have any attendance guesses for us tonight? It's 8.32, Mark. I just wrote it down, 5.05. 5.05. Ooh, good guess, Mr. Pazabon. I am going to, oh, boy. We have to think about this one. So those at home that want to play our Polar Attendance Challenge, Larry has put the number on the board, 5.05. So you at home can play by tweeting higher or lower to Larry's guess. I will say that it looks like there's a few more people on that side than on this side. 505, boy, that's a close one. <laughs> I hope Bob Benedetto <laughs> doesn't go with me because he said he was up here. Remember he said he says, hey, he hasn't guessed right all year. Yep. Yeah, oh, boy. That's a really good one, Larry. Good. My yeah. gut tells me lower, but my head tells me higher. Now, that's the old adage. You go with your gut. Or do you go with your head? Now, you see, I don't have much of a gut. No. I've been working out lately. And, and that's like going with your gut. Is that like going with your heart? I think so. Yeah, I think so. so. I am. Oh, boy, that's a really good guess. Good. You got time. <laughs> I'm going to need some help on Twitter on this one. Oh. I, I get hits. Oh, I get hits. No, no. I'm going <laughs> to. 505. All right, we got one. No, that's not a guess. That's a follow. I'm, 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 going, I'm going with my. I'm going with my... Okay. There's no pressure. Have we ever picked the same guess? Can we do that? What do you mean? You're going to say 505? <laughs> I can't lose. Yeah. It'd be tied every time. <laughs> I have to think about that one, Larry. All right. 8.32 to play in this second period. 3-2 in favor of Hurst. That was one of your better guesses, I think, this year. Thank you. Face off won by the Eagles. You're just playing up to me. That's I all, am. Right? I am. <laughs> Now Blair That's just offside. kept that Ooh. in. No, I think he kept it in. Yeah. Now a shot and a save there. And we'll hold Blair. I'm going to 
I'm going to say higher. Higher? I'm going to say higher. It's, it's close. I think you've got it within 10 tonight. So I'm, I'm going to say higher. What was the attendance last time? Because wasn't it real close to that? Yeah, no, it was. Uh, well, that's not not the one we had the last time we had our attendance. Yeah, challenge. that's what I'm saying. It was 503. Yeah. Went, see, I think it's going to be right yeah. in that ballpark. And it was 513. There you go. So we'll see. Eagles trail by one. Buck taken by the Lumberjacks. They clear the zone down the ice. Lacours chases it. Icing. And no. No icing on the play. Lacours on the end boards. Now Griffin with it. Griffin to Lacours. Big hit there by Lacours, knocking over Roth. It's been a pretty physical game tonight. Now Lacroix chases it into his own zone. Off the far boards, now it's center ice. Page in the near side. We got two down there. Look at, look at. Whoa, ball. look out. Whoa, heads up. It's up in our area here. Wow, I yeah. Flinch there. I, was... I just have to see something black going by. We're look, both of us are looking down here. No, Three right of us are looking down in the corner. A puck in our vicinity. Nice yeah. job. Catching a wire of the speaker right in front of it. It's still <laughs> wobbling. Seven twenty nine to play in this second period. Eagles have gotten one back. They still trail by one. Buckle on the end boards. Hurst with a turnover chance. Oh, and missing the net on the near side was Lamberti. We'd like to have that back. Now another chance. Save there by Tallarico. Eagles were that close to tying this game. Now Schwab with a shot and a save rebound. Oh, oh Lamberti again. He couldn't, he couldn't get the handle on that couldn't one. Couldn't get a handle on the puck. Now he gets knocked down. That's Schwab. And boy, this has been a physical game here, Larry, between these two squads. A lot of hits. Eagles are coming out this period for sure. Boy, there there's again. a big hit by Schwab on Cannon right below us. Offside. <laughs> was, wow. It wasn't a penalty anywhere, folks. It was offside. This is some good action here, Larry. Some good physical play out there. Some big hitting tonight going on. They must have got talking. Eagles must have had some talking to in uh, between the first and the second period. I think so. Well, you know, fans like that. This That sort of play gets the fans into the game. Yeah. Broadcasters like that as well. Certainly this guy does. Face off one by Hurst. Myron with it. Myron in his own zone. The Lumberjacks. Getting out shot by the Eagles by 26 to 15 count. Now Lumberjacks within the Eagles zone. Boy, Clark goes hard into the boards. And they're going to call oh, a penalty on the Eagles. These, uh, these referees, I guess they're not wearing their names on the back of their jerseys anymore. So you don't know who's who out there. Probably a good thing tonight. <laughs> this parrot uh, will go to the box for the Eagles. So another power play opportunity for Hurst. As this, I think, what, the fourth power play in this period, Larry? Third or fourth? I'll, I'll go with your guess. Sure. It was somewhere <laughs> in that vicinity. Get the call from Bob. Eagle penalty to number two, Cameron Parrott. Two minutes, interference. So Parrott interference to Shondo with the puck for Hurst. Puts it down low. Chance in front. Puck loose. Bouncing all over the place. Benedetto makes the save. Now here's Lamberti with it. At center ice, Lamberti across the blue line. His shot hits the pads of Lacroix. Now Lamberti does a good job on the penalty kill. Very feisty in the defensive end. Get it down. That's what you want now. Blair shoots it in. Jensen goes to the bench. Nobody going off the bench. Now finally, Eagles get a player off there. Minute 20 left on the power play. First at center ice. Eagles with the puck. Johnson. Zach Johnson. Pass to Butcher. Now Butcher had a player open over on the far side. Couldn't find him. Here's Blair. Winds and fires. That hits the uh, pad rather of Lacroix. Now Lamberti, he gets hit up high. Yeah. Little cross oh, check there. They're uh -oh. going to call that one, I think. I'm not sure who they're calling it Should on. Should be a cross check on the Hurst player. Yeah, that's what it's going to be, Larry. As a retaliation there, and he shakes his head, but he goes finally have one go their way as it was, I believe, Clark, number six, Cameron Clark with the penalty. So we'll have four and four hockey for 
56 seconds and then barring any other penalties, which definitely isn't, <laughs> isn't likely the way this game's gone. Your son's gonna have a lot of work I on know, there, he's, eh? get, he's getting an education at the, at the scores <laughs> table. Vance Nason's first scores, official scores table. He's probably learned a lot of words he hasn't heard either. <laughs> I don't think yeah, so. He's heard those words. You got honest Bob down there. Yeah, Bob. I'm not talking about him. I know. <laughs> I was. Penalty. <laughs> Here's the Eagles with it. Roth plays it over. Chance Shoot in front. It. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so four and four hockey for 30 seconds. 4.45 to play in the second period. 3-2 Hurst. Out center ice. Fisher poke checked away. Fisher with the puck across the blue line. Now Fisher has some room. Fisher pass. Chance shot hits the side of the net. Good job by Benedetto to kind of cut off that angle. Benedetto's got himself back in this game, Larry, after giving up a shaky third goal. He's played well. Now a shot and a glove save there by Benedetto, and he'll hold. You want to give yeah. a shout out to Carter McPhail, former Sioux Eagles netminder, watching tonight in Johnstown. Playing for the Tomahawks. Remember how much Johnstown liked us when we oh. broadcast? Remember they brought us that sub or whatever <laughs> yes, it was? Yeah, yeah, the big one. That was fantastic. Scott's by Dam. Remember the group from Scott's yes. by Dam? Yeah. I, I, if I ever go to Johnstown, I'll go there. That's where Slapshot was That's done. That's right. <laughs> yes, indeed. The original, not the other two. Oh, now a shot there by Praisner and a save by Talarico. Okay, folks, the jerseys. Ahead, jerseys here. You want to bid on a jersey? 1-906-322-3330. Starting bid's $100. Increments of five. Again, you can Good call jerseys. or text. Yep. Yeah. Just put the number or the name and or the name of the jersey you would like. Oh, that's, oh, that's there gonna it is. be that's another that. penalty on Hurst. And yeah. here we go. That's interference. Now you'll just want to get the heck out of there. Don't want to have a chance to... Negate this five on three. Don't even it up. Yep, Doug Coach Love Prod saying just get the heck out of there. And so a five on three opportunity for the Sioux Eagles here. Out of town, Larry, Blind River and Timmins now tied at three. Midway through the third period after two periods in Espanola, 3-1 Rayside Balfour and Powassan with a minute left in the third period. They've gone up on Kirkland Lake by the score of three to two. Sioux Greyhounds at Kitchener tonight. Seven, three hounds in the wow. second period. Is that team playing some hockey or what? And the Laker hockey team, Lake Superior State University, leading at Alabama. Huntsville won nothing. Lead to number 71, uh, Dawson Waddell. Two minutes, cross-checking. So cross-checking the call on Waddell. Here's where the uh, Eagles want to take advantage. This is five on three. They have 48 seconds. They won that face-off. They got one shot on goal. He made a save. Okay, win this again and, and start doing repeat here. Five on three opportunity, Eagles. Blair can't keep it in. Now here's Gallant on the three on five for them. Now Gallant with the shot, that one blocked by Butcher. Eagles might have some numbers here. Five on two potentially. Here's Praisner with it. Praisner to Jensen. Now Jensen, backhand pass, Blair over to Butcher. Butcher, back to Blair, back to Butcher. You gotta put a couple people in front there now. Now Butcher over to Praisner. Or rather, Quinn. Now here's Butcher's shot. That hits a player in front. Quinn has it. Ten seconds left on the five on three. Butcher at the blue line. Over to Quinn. His shot. That right goes through the crease. crease. And Blair just kept that one in. Nice job by him. Now here's Quinn with it. Now it's a five on four for another minute. Butcher down low to Quinn. Player open in front. Nice sliding play there by the Hurst player. Quinn moves in. Quinn with a shot. Save up high by Calarico. Oh, and now oh. we're going to have a whistle. And then off the moorings again, Larry. It looks like it is. And boy, that Tellerico, he's he's feisty back yeah. there in net, isn't he? There's a lot of stick work and things behind after the whistle uh, by seems like both teams here now. I don't know. These teams have okay. met once this year, so I wouldn't say they're rivals per se, but that must have been a memorable the... game because teams that... don't like each other very much. No. So 56 seconds left on the power play. Three minutes to play in the second period. 3-2 Hurst. Face off one by the Eagles. Schwab over to Scarella. Scarella shot. Glove save there. Saw that one all the way as Tallarico and he'll hold. And Birdie was knocked down in front of the net. Yeah, he's going to go. Uh, I thought he's going to question the ref and say, listen, you've got to call this interference in front. 
Shots 29-17 in favor of the Eagles. We'll be here tomorrow night, Larry and I, for the call of the Sioux Eagles taking on the Timmins Rock. The Rock only, the Timmins rather, only visit to Polar Stadium during the regular season. Puck over in the far corner. Eagles still in the power play. And that one goes over the stick of Scarella and down the ice. Scarella picks up the puck. Now Hurst, short-handed with it. Wood, nice move at center ice. Tried to get it up to Lamberti. Now Lamberti keeps it in. Lamberti, he gets crunched there along the end boards. Now Lamberti, boy, he's feisty out there tonight as well. Schwab moves in. Schwab passes it over. Quick Who's shot, Scarella. With? Save there. And now Lamberti mixing it up with the Hurst player in front. Still five to... seconds left on the power play, Larry. I'm trying to figure out who had who didn't have the helmet on. Oh, yeah. Must have went to the bench. 2-0-8 to oh. play in this second period. Eagles have really picked up the pace in the second. It's been a good period for them. It, it has been, yes. And it's not like Hurst has played a poor period. They played a solid game, but the Eagles have just stepped it up a little bit more here in the second period. Face off to the left of goaltender Nicholas Tallarico, who has 28 saves and two assists. Have to go Ooh, through the well, archives, well. Larry, and see if you can ever find a time that a Eagles netminder or the opposition netminder has had more than one point. I'd be very curious to find your research on that one. I'm sorry. There's some discussion with the linesman and the coach over there. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure what was going Glad on you there. clarified that. <laughs> Face off one by the Eagles. Both teams at full strength. Now a fan shot there. We'll call it a pass. Over to Praisner. Jensen in the far corner. The players collide. Hurst can't clear the zone. Kept in by Quinn. His shot deflected. Goes wide. Now Quinn down low to Jensen. This player lost his stick as Jensen gets knocked down. Player still fighting for that puck along the end boards. Minute 25 to play in this second period. Now puck goes over the far side. Big hit there. Now a trip there by on Roth. No icing on this play. The Eagles shot it down the ice themselves. The core is with it as we're approaching one minute left to play here in the second period. And that's going to be, I think, a penalty on Parrott. He's going to call, I think, a hold. And so here we go again. Yeah, it's called Lots holding. of penalties here in this contest. This game not really flying by at all tonight. Ten past nine. Yeah. 7.30. So Eagles will be shorthanded again. If Hurst does not score, this will carry over to the second period. What you said? You said high, right? Yeah. said higher. I don't know. Can I change it? <laughs> Last minute of the play. Second period. Eagle penalty to number two. Cameron Parrott. Two minutes holding. See that? Holding the call on Parrott. First short, or rather on the power play. Now we're going to have another penalty, and I think this one's going to go against Hurst. It'll be a slashing call. Yep. <laughs> it's so been an endless parade to the penalty box here in this second period. So that'll make it four on four hockey for the remainder of this period, barring any other penalties. Now, uh, there's been a change of calls here in this second period. Actually, each team now has to say, listen, if I retaliate, you know, if somebody gets a penalty and if I don't retaliate, then we'll, we'll have a power play. So both teams have to look at that way. If he's going to call on one and stop the retaliation, and you you uh, you won't be playing shorthanded. Penalty to number twenty-five, JJ Bernal. Two minutes slashing. So slashing the call, number Dahl. Thirty seconds left to play in the second period. Don't go anywhere. We're in store for a pretty exciting third period coming up. It's been a great game so far. Quinn at center ice with the puck. Now Quinn with some speed across the blue line. Plays it off the boards. Now Quinn on the near side, along with Jensen. Schwab with it. 10 seconds to play. First looking for one more chance as they'll clear it at center ice. Eagles might have one chance here. Schwab's yeah. got to get it over. He can't. 
So the Eagles get one back, but they trail by the score of 3-2. to two. Don't go anywhere. We have an exciting third period coming up on Hockey TV. Scott Nason back at Puller Stadium on this Friday night in downtown Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. We'll be joined momentarily by Larry Pazabon. Our score after two periods of play here, the Hearst Lumberjacks lead the Sioux Eagles by the score of 3-2. The Lumberjacks led 3-1 after one period of play, but the Eagles would score the only goal in that second period as Brendan Blair scored. The only goal, as I mentioned, in the second period for the Eagles. I'm waiting for my internet to load up here to get us some stats, but it looks like our internet is having some problems at the moment, but it's a 3-2 lead for the Hearst Lumberjacks. Been a very spirited game as far as physical play and some of the action on the ice. Joined once again by Larry Pazabon. Paz, I'm going to need your stats there for a okay. moment as my internet's not working, but uh, before we get to that, your thoughts on the second period in the game as a whole. Well, uh, I'll tell you, I, I believe the Eagles came to play in this game in the second period. They, they carry the play, uh, I got to say, most of the way, uh, a lot of the way, put it that way. They scored a goal. They've been more aggressive. They've been hitting, and they've been uh, forechecking. Uh, almost, I'll tell you, the first and second period are just reversal from each team. Uh, Hurst dominated the first. We'll, we'll say they, they really dominated the first. Eagles come out and, and, and dominated the second. Now we'll see who wants this game the most right now. Recapping the scoring in that second period, Larry, as I mentioned, the only goal scored by Brendan Blair at the 928 mark with an assist from number 16, Lucas Roth, excuse me, at the 651 mark. I was looking at the wrong score. And it's 3-2 in favor of Hurst shots, 30-17 to in favor of the Hurst Lumberjacks. Eagles outshot them. Or for 15, the Eagles, rather. Eagles outshot them 15-4 in that second period. All right, so we are underway in the third period, and we'll get to a couple more shout-outs in our attendance challenge coming up here in the next couple breaks. Eagles with the puck. Now Hurst picks it up. Fortin with it. Now picked up by Griffin, his shot, and gloved down by Benedetto. Before we get to our attendance challenge, Larry, we had a very nice conversation with uh, the Quinn family. Tell us more about it. Yeah, mom and dad, dad, uh, Chris, mom, Linda came up, and uh, they're in, uh, in the Chicago area, mm -hmm. and they want to say, to say hello to uh, Jerry, I'm sorry, Jerry and Roger Quinn. That's uh, the grandparents of Kyle. Oh, and also say hello to sister Kyle's sister Cassidy. Yeah, absolutely say hello to her. Roll Tide, Alabama fan. Her and I have a lot in common, apparently. We'll get to our attendance challenge here coming up. I'm not in a hurry to get to that one, so you know how that all worked <laughs> out. Nobody played on Twitter, so that's where I needed the help tonight. Nobody, they're all here. Nobody tweeted. Now here's the Lumberjacks with it. They'll have a brief power play coming up. Rather, the Eagles have a brief power play coming up as we have four and four hockey, and now the Eagles will have a 20-second power play. Quinn across the blue line, he lost the puck, picked up by DeShondo. Now on the near boards, Erdley has it. Now that's gonna be a, I thought it might be too many men on the ice, but I'm not sure what the whistle was for, Larry. Yeah, he was pointing down, yeah, I don't know. Larry, our attendance tonight, you put up a guess of 505, and boy, I struggle with this one. My gut was telling me one thing, my head was telling me another. I went with my head and said higher. What was our attendance tonight? 498. So I should have went with my gut, because I knew that. I said you were within 10, and you were. So Larry has tied the series at three, and we'll have a tiebreaker tomorrow night. As Eagles will take on at Timmons, I will venture the guess, and one of us will go up. No, I'm not going to show up because now we're tied. <laughs> That's right. Just, just call, like the NFL this year, just play it to a tie. Yeah. <laughs> now centering chance for the Eagles. Back to the point. Schwab shot. That one blocked by Arkel as both teams at full strength. Now here's the Lumberjacks with the Gallant with it. His shot. That one deflects into the netting and goes out of play. Larry, while we have a moment, let's look at our out-of-town scoreboard, assuming our internet has started working again. And, well, I guess I assume too much because it is not. If I get off the Wi-Fi, that'll help. Oh, technology, Larry, can be a bear sometimes. Almost said something else. I'm glad I went with bear. Now the Eagles player gets knocked down. Also starts with B, I might add. Now puck behind the net. Bad? <laughs> yes, that's exactly it. Buckle on the end boards. Brutal. <laughs> that could be. That's a Canadian word. You guys use that all the time. Brutal. 
Brutal. That one shot down the ice. I tried using that in Tennessee. They didn't even know what I was talking about. Out of town, Larry, good news for Eagles fans. Blind River has fallen to Timmons by the score of 4-3. to three. So that Rock team will come in 11-5-1. They're going to be a tough opponent for the Eagles. Rayside Balfour leading Espanola 5-3. to three. That one has five minutes left in the third period. And Powassan knocks off Kirkland Lake tonight by the score of 4-2. to two. Sioux Greyhounds in action tonight at Kitchener. 7-3 Hounds in the third period. Now a shot saved there, Benedetto. Rebound goes to the Eagles player. Oh, good chance there, but couldn't find the open Eagles player. That was Scarella. Now Buckle on the near boards, taken there by Caleb Wood. Wood at center ice with the puck, flips it up. More shot saved there by Talarico. And here come the, ex- excuse me, the Lumberjacks. LaCour's with it. Now he had it taken away, gets it right back. Picked up by the Eagles. Morich, Morich at center ice, he'll shoot it in. On the near boards, Lamberti. Now the Lumberjacks have it. Young at center ice, he'll backhand the puck in. Glove down by Roth, now cleared to center. Morich, rather Myron with it. Or Fanos, he'll clear it to center. Myron, plays it in his own zone. Quickly up ice, now at center ice, shot in by the Lumberjacks, Bullwear with it. Plays it on the near side, back in the Lumberjack zone. That That's shot icing. down the ice, and that'll be an icing call. While well, we have one more okay. chance, Larry, look okay. at one more score. As the Sioux, or the Lake Superior State University Lakers and Alabama Huntsville now tied at one. Okay, now uh, Alex Schwab, he tried to get off the ice. He couldn't skate, he had to crawl off to the bench, and he went down the tunnel with uh, Carey, so I'm not sure what happened with him? Face off to the left of Talarico. First has, that one's gonna be shot down the ice, chasing it as Young. Young's gonna catch up to it, and negate the icing, put it in front, but nobody was there. Now here's Blair with some speed. Blair across the blue line. Blair still has it, gets knocked down. Griffin with the puck. Now Blair picks it right back up. Quinn was open in front, but Blair couldn't find him. Now that's that one icing. shot down the ice, and that'll be icing. So we'll have another face-off in the Hurst zone. Larry, give us uh, one more time about the jerseys in the lobby and how fans at home can bid on these pink in the rink jerseys. Oh, bid on a jersey. Call or text 1-906-322-3330. Starts at $100. And $5 increments if someone's already bid on the jersey that you wish to, to buy. Go for it. And we'll keep you up to date tomorrow night, more so than we did tonight, because tomorrow's a closing on the bid on the jerseys after, I think, the first period, right? Yep, or is uh, second. Second, second yep. period, Second okay. intermission. The bidding closes. They close the doors at the second intermission. Used to be a commercial locally that did that. I don't and think they're a sponsor. That's, that's when Elvis leaves the building. <laughs> that's right, indeed. Or the fat lady sings. Can yeah, you oh. still say that? I don't know. Well, you're not supposed to. Now, but it's yeah, the Me Too yeah, generation. Yeah. Got to be careful with anything yeah. these days. Huh. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, indeed. Oh, listen, why we got a break here? Shoot up and uh, right up to where the pipes are all. That's uh, the Prisoner family. Just, yeah, right. No, over. All right, we passed oh. him. Right, right there. There he there is. He is. Anybody that buys us water has been intermission, Larry. We like a lot. <laughs> thanks, Rob. Yeah, absolutely, indeed. And thanks, Mr. Prasner. Now just kept in by Lamberti. Eagles trail by one. Still a lot of time in this game. 15-40 to play in this third period. LaCours across the blue line shot. Benedetto makes the save. Benedetto hasn't seen a lot of pucks, Larry, really since the first half of the first period, but he's had to make some very big saves. You remember that one he made with the oh, glove in the second? In the second so. period. That was, that was a game, game saver yep. right there. We will be here tomorrow night against the Timmins Rock. The Eagles will take on Timmins. Face off 7 o'clock with the pregame show at 6.45. You can also hear the podcast, uh, the audio podcast of this broadcast on the gamesportshow.com. We put those up, probably put that up tomorrow morning so you can relive all the exciting NLJHL action. And go back and say, did they really say that? Chances are we did. And we apologize. <laughs> <laughs> now Hurst with the puck. Me? <laughs> I said we. No, I'm just saying Guilt me. Guilt by association <laughs> in this case. 
Now Timmons, or rather Hurst, I've called them about four <laughs> different cities in <laughs> yeah, yeah. northern Ontario tonight. So we'll, I'm we'll lucky they're winning. Or you're, <laughs> they're lucky they're winning. <laughs> right. We'll stick with Hurst for the rest of the broadcast. Now Waddle with it. Timmons already won tonight, didn't they? They did. They beat Blind yeah. River 4-3. to three. A buckle on the near boards. Cannon with it. Page to Cannon behind the net. Cannon with the puck. Oh, there's a cross check there um, by Blair. Looked like a cross check, no call. Timmons four check, effective. He's gotta be careful, he almost had too many men on the ice. Quinn will, oh, that hits there. a player on the bench. Going, Going to off. the bench, but I think the one player was off. It hit him when he was off the ice. Now, if he had had one foot on the ice, yeah, he went on. you're that, right. One foot off, one, then he would have been playing. <laughs> Sounds like a song. <laughs> Put your left foot in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <indeed. laughs> Mr. Schwab says Alec will be fine, so that's good. We don't want him yeah. to get hit. Went down the ice. We'll have another icing call. Now he's back on the ice yep. now. Good to see. Mom knows best. I think he's on the ice. Is that? Yes, there yep. he is. Yeah. 14.07 to play in this third period. 3-2 in favor of Hurst. The Eagles led 1-0 before the Lumberjacks scored three goals in the first half of that first period. The Eagles got one back in the second. We need to get another one back here in the third. Morich with the puck for the Eagles. Back to the point. Now a shot. Stick save there on the shot by Bulware. And Tallarico just guides that out of the way. He sees a lot of shots down there, right? Down, down there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll give you a couple more sponsors here from uh, where I leave off. Okay, Lakeview Internal Medicine. Checkered Flag Party Store. You know where that is, eh? Okay, yes. Know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry, I was checking some scores there, Larry. Yeah, okay. I was checking my stocks, actually. Yeah, They're yeah. not doing very well. Oh. Well, we've heard from the Orfanos family, the, uh, their daughter works for NASDAQ. How about that? Do you guys have a stock market in Canada? What's it called? TSX. That's Toronto Stock Exchange. Okay, okay. Where's that? Where's NAS? Is it NASDAQ? NASDAQ. That's like, De the, that's like the tech stock. I, I, okay. I, I, think it's, I think it is in Chicago. She's a tennis player, was it? Yes, tennis she player, is, yeah. yeah. Fortunately, or I should say, fortunately for me, she didn't bring her racket because I guarantee if we played, she'd wipe the floor with me. Uh, we Both of us would play against her. She'd beat us. Oh, I yeah. used to like playing tennis. Oh, yeah. I did. Yeah, you know? yeah I did. They're never. Uh, I, used to, I used to, instead of going for a backhand, I used to switch ra my hand, the racket from See, my I hand do that to sometimes, too. Now, did you use the wooden rackets? Oh, yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> Boy, okay. I still have them. Oh, boy. I, I think I have an aluminum one also, but I, I use the wooden one. I learned on the wooden rackets. Me too. Let me tell you, the first time I got a non-wooden one, I, I, mean, I died and went to heaven, literally. It was like, wow, oh, this yeah. is easy. This is five pounds lighter. <laughs> right, and it was about five inches bigger. Yes. Yeah. Back to hockey here as Parrott will shoot it off the boards. Eagles clear the zone. Shots 32-19 in favor of the Eagles. They trail by one. Butcher behind the net, now plays over to Quinn. That one shot back to center ice. That one will go right back into the Eagles zone. Look at this, oh boy. Oh, now here's That's Milan saying, with a chance. Yep, yeah, goes through the crease. Goes to Praisner. Now Praisner at center ice. Plays it over. Oh, That's offside. gonna be offside. Yeah. And a little nifty play there, but it didn't work out as Riley Jensen tried to make the pass. Yeah. Okay, folks, again, when you come to the rink here, we have uh, Chuck a Puck, cost a dollar, win a jersey, or two tickets in the next game. You have programs, a lot of lucky numbers are called after the, the Chuck a Puck. And uh, what else we have? We have, uh, I'm trying to think. <laughs> yeah, shoot, uh, shoot to win a car. That's right. By a program, all those opportunities. Everything's bucket about a buck. Good deals had by all. Puck in the Hurst zone. Fisher over there. Now Fisher passes it over behind the net. Not chance for oh, Lambert. Oh, yes. Goal. Oh. Whoa. Another big goal. Jake Lamberti. He had a couple.
couple chances in that second period, Larry, uh, especially that first one early, but boy, he got the puck and he got the goal. And I don't know if the Lanning and Lamberti families are watching back out west, but they like that one. Eagles fans like that one. We have a 3-3 tie, 12-31 to play here in the third period. That's a big goal again for he the was Eagles. Due. He was due tonight. He's had a couple chances. Let's get the call from Bob. Goal scored by number 24. Big Jake save there. Lamberti. Sure was. Page with a good Unassisted. chance. Unassisted. Unassisted goal by Lamberty. And a nice save there by Benedetto as uh, Page found himself pretty much in front of the net. Yeah, the puck kept bouncing like uh, that fall of the bouncing ball, and the Eagles couldn't put their stick on it, and then uh, Hurst did. And they got an opportunity to go right in there and score, but uh, big save. That would only took six seconds. Yeah. yeah they would have come back it was on that. right out the face. I'm not early shot. That misses the net. Goes to the Eagles player, Scarella. Now Scarella lost the puck. Clearing of the zone is Lacroix. Now shot back in. Tarico behind his net. Now the Lumberjacks with it. Trying to clear it out. They do. Here's Waddle with it. Waddle in front. Lost the puck. Picked up by Blair and cleared down the ice. Now chasing oh, it. Now two Eagles. Oh. And I almost think they both were going for the puck and they both kind of stopped for a moment. Now Butcher with it. A shot. That goes high over the net. Thought the other player was a Hurst player at first. Me too. Like, yeah, there's two <laughs> Eagles players. We'll say they didn't know what to do. They didn't believe they were that much open. Here's Scarella with it. Down low. Wood. Now centering chance. Bodies collide behind the net. Picked up by Waddle. Waddle lost the puck to Praisner. Now Praisner. Shot. Ooh, nice block there by Myron. And a pretty good shot by Wood. They're not calling anything. Schwab deflects it in by Morich. 11 minutes to play in this third period. We're tied at three. First with the puck. They led by two in the first period, but the Eagles have gotten the last two. McDonald with the puck. Now McDonald over at the far corner, plays it behind the net. Ardo, chance in front. That one goes right through the crease. Picked up by McDonald. Now he puts it behind the net. Bullware passes it up. Now rink wide pass. Goes off the stick of Praisner into the far corner. Now Praisner puts it in front of the net, goes all the way to the blue line. Here's Ertl in the Eagles zone. Now shot right back out and down the ice. Tuga behind the net. Where the far boards to Shondo. Hurst clears the zone. Fortin, right below our broadcast position. Eagles come up with the puck. Next whistle, barring a power play, will have immediate timeout. Deshondo with it. Clears it to center ice. Picked up by Griffin. One bounces around in front of the Eagles bench. Now Deshondo with it. Backhand pass. Griffin. Griffin now, nice move. Griffin moves to the net, puts it in front. The Eagles are just going to shoot that one down the ice, and uh, that's, that's going to be icing. icing. Yeah. And we'll have immediate timeout, Larry, with 9.39 to play in the third period. we got a good game here. We're tied we at three goals apiece. Okay, i got a few more sponsors here. Uh, Clark Bailey Newell's Funeral Home and Cremation Center, Superior Insurance Agency, C.S. Mulder Funeral Home and Cremation Services. Well, no and media, War Memorial Hospital. No media timeout, Larry. Oh. Uh, once again. <laughs> we're way ahead of these guys. Yeah, well. <laughs> or we're not, we're not on the same, same page. <laughs> I think you're right on both. Now, Buck taken by the Lumberjacks. In front of shot. Big save there, Benedetto. Buck's Puck got, still loose as the net goes way off the moorings. If you're going to get the net off the moorings, I guess that's the way to do it. Yeah. Well, I think the Hurst player ended up knocking into it more than the Eagles player. Now we'll get now a media timeout, time Larry, right so now, continue yeah. with our sponsors. Oh, already. You can never say sponsors enough, Larry. Okay, we're going with the Chippewa County Credit Union, EUP, Eastern Upper Peninsula News, Art Van and Erickson Appliances, 
the amalgamated, didn't they? Art Van and Erickson. Yes, they are. They are one unit. Right, one unit now. Okay. It's like and time. It's like Time Warner. Okay, and, and you're a favorite here to check it flag party star. It is. Why, why, why do you keep saying that? <laughs> My I, other, I, might, I might have bought some beverages from me, there. Me too. Yeah, me too, yeah. yeah. At War Memorial Hospital, I visited that place uh, once when I was playing hockey. Here. I've been in that place too many times, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, Not, well, nothing against War Memorial, no, but it, no, just no. sickness I had, uh, and stuff. I had Dr. Scott stitch me up. Oh. I don't remember, you wouldn't remember. No, he no, was he's still there. He, no, he's uh, long gone now. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's passed on. Uh, he was uh, the team doctor for the Lakers. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, he, he was a good guy, boy. He could stitch you. Good last name, I got to say. Yeah. Anybody named Scott's yeah. all right with me. Dr. Scott, yep. So the media timeout is ending. And you know what his payment was? He'd be coming down here every game. Uh, uh, every game and work the games every you know Friday Saturday, and his payment was a road trip, and he used to fly and come with us to to St. Louis. Oh wow! Yeah, that that was his payment coming to the, a road trip game. Oh how healthcare costs have gone up since then. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing you have that government run healthcare, Larry. <laughs> Face off to the right of Joe Benedetto, who has played well. The latter stages of this game, keeping the Eagles in it. They're tied at three. Blair with the puck over at the far corner. Now Fisher has it. Shots 33-22 in favor of the Eagles. Puck behind the net. Roth on the near side boards. That's going to be Wood icing. Down the ice. That'll yep. be icing. So we have a moment, Larry. We'll see if we can... Maybe one more look at the out-of-town scoreboard. We're still okay. having some, having some internet issues here. Let me try one thing here. We're just waiting for one final. With who? Aaron loading data. Well, that would be a reason why my internet isn't right. working. But I'll take care of this. Live, live broadcast, Larry. These things yeah. happen. Yeah. Oh, well, the Laker, uh, Laker the Eagles, got Lakers. Thrown out, Eagles got thrown out of the face-off circle, so... Here we go, Larry. And and Eagle, Eagles do win the faceoff. We'll get there to the go. scores in a moment as the Eagles with the puck. Another icing. It'll be another icing. Yep. So we can update at least the maybe the Ontario Hockey League. That Hounds game might have gone final. Well, looks like my whole internet collection is pretty much it. Well, I have a moment, Larry. Okay. Wanna, even though I know she's not listening because she's in the hospital, my sister, oh. Nikki, her last name's Sony. Just gave birth yesterday to a beautiful baby girl. Six oh, pounds, nice. 14 ounces, Satara Lee Sony, my so, first ever niece. So that's your, her first? Or her, her second. Her she, second? Had, she had a boy a couple years ago named Roshan. So my parents' first ever granddaughter. As I yeah. have two sons, my sister now with a son and a daughter. So Satara, what do you think of that name? Isn't that a cool, cool name? Different, yeah. I different. like it. She's a millionaire family, one of each. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you and I, uh, two boys, uh, <laughs> we're, we're the poor people. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> My like brother's that. got one of each. Oh, yeah, yep, oh, that's yep. it. Yeah, exactly right. Well, she's married to a doctor, so that helps oh. too. 8.29 to play in this third period. We're tied at three goals apiece. Don Supa remembers Dr. Scott. Very, yeah. very oh, complimentary good. back in the 80s. I don't remember him. Eagles thrown out of the faceoff circle again, and uh, Hurst win it. Erdley will dump it down low. Griffin behind the net. Lost the puck to Blair. Blair has a goal tonight. Pass broken up at center ice by Lacroix. Now the Eagles with it. Eagles in their own zone. Got to be Guys, careful. Got to put your head up. Move Here's the to puck. Here's Sando. with the puck. Now Griffin. This all off a turnover. Griffin in front of shot. That one blocked. Eagles now clear the zone. As Scarella, he'll dump it down into the no icing first on that end. One. Yep, under eight to play in the third period. Yet to see an overtime, I believe, Larry here at home so far. You know what you just did, eh? I did. <laughs> Seems like we've been here overtime. This game, uh, almost 10 o'clock. We still have a lot of time left. McDonald across the blue line. And that's going to be a penalty on the Eagles, Larry. So Hurst is going to go on another power play. What's he it's either going to be a hook or a hold or a trip. Hooking. Looks like a hook. And so that's going to go against Quinn. 
with 7.31 to play here in the third period. Well, well, well. Eagles penalty kill unit has done a great job oh, it so was, far It tonight. wasn't on Quinn. No, it wasn't on Quinn. Well, it was on a different Eagles player? Yeah, Quinn was questioning it, but I didn't get to, uh, get, get to see the number going in. 21? That's Jensen then. Okay. If, uh, if my information is correct. <laughs> if your eyes are, don't deceive you. Now Gallant gets kicked out of the face-off circle. We'll get the call from Bob. Eagle penalty at the number 21, Riley Jensen. Two minutes hooking. So Jensen, the hooking call. Larry, the good eyesight. Oh, no, I got back on the power Whoa. play. And that one goes. Look out, Coach Doug LaPrade. You don't want to mess up that beautiful mug. No. As, uh, We've had people behind there getting hit in other years. Eh? Yeah, well. <laughs> Bruno? <laughs> yeah. Well, was it was Cappy hit, too? I think too? Jim was hit there yeah. a couple times. It was uh, Bill Vanderlees, uh, the goalie guy. He, he was hit yep. in the shoulder or something. Yep, yeah. yep. It's a shooting gallery. <laughs> it's gonna be, gonna and have no, your heads but, up down but there. But nobody won a prize, you know. <laughs> no, well, you're right. <laughs> there is no prize at the end of the uh, hit. That puck shot down the ice. Lacroix with it. Seven minutes to play in this third period. Minute 30 left on the Hearst power play. Lacroix at center ice. Now Gallant. Hearst hasn't scored in a while. Their last goal was in the first period. Now quick shot, Benedetto makes the save and he'll hold. He come out of the blue right, cut down the angle. Shots 33-23 in favor of the Eagles. Out of town scoreboard, Lakers and Alabama Huntsville tied at one now in the third period of play. 18 hour bus ride, eh? Yeah, it's like, yeah, oh, two lane <laughs> roads, jeez. <laughs> Sleeper bus. <laughs> Leave this game, it's five blocks. <laughs> <laughs> Actual conversation today, I might add. <laughs> yeah. Not making this stuff up. <laughs> Hurst on the power play. Minute left on their extra man advantage. At least I get paid to come here. <laughs> there you go, Larry. That's your first ever. That's your first ever pompadour. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, that impression. wasn't called for. That, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Leave the impressions to me from now on, okay. Larry. Come on, yeah. that, was, that was good. But oh, I got to tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fortin with the puck, 40 okay. seconds left. The jokes are for us and, and probably Don. I think Don's catching on to okay. our, our humor act right now. He's, he co coined that phrase, by the way, that I just used. Now Hurst across the blue line. Clark with it. Tried to put it in front. Fisher in the near corner. McDonald plays it over. Clark. Ooh. Now the Clark falls down. Eagles with the puck. Here's a chance. Eagles have it. Blair in front, a shot, and a goal! Blair again! Owen Shire found Brendan Blair in front, short-handed. And you gotta credit this Eagles special teams, especially their short-handed unit, as they take a 4-3 lead over the Hearst Lumberjacks with 5.43 to play in the third period. Blair family in attendance here and all across the country, happy once again as our Eagle fans. We're having some discussions, Larry, but I think that's going to that's gonna stand. The goal will stand, but I think maybe they're talking about an uh, uh, inadvertent stick. The goal scored by number seven, Brendan Blair. Assist number 20, Owen Chair. Time of the goal, 5.43. So Blair's second goal, big save there, Benedetto. Quick shot by Young, Benedetto up to the task. Eagles with their second lead of the night. Now turnover again in the zone. Nice job by Praisner to pick the pocket of Arnold. Now he gets knocked down at center ice. And we're going to oh, have yeah, well, is, a yeah. penalty as Praisner got chopped down. And that's going to give the Eagles a power play with 5.13 to play in this third period. The Bolton family's here tonight, too. That's uh, Shire's uh, grandparents, Dennis okay, and Sandy, yep, yep. sitting right down over there. Hounds win again, Larry. Uh, final over Kitchener, 7-4. 7-4. 10-3-2. I don't think a whole lot of people had after 15 games the Hounds at that record. We knew they were going to be good, but boy, they are good. Penalty to number 13, Blaze Arkel. Two minutes, slashing. Blair with the shot, going for the hat trick. That one deflects wide. He was on the power play. Shot down the ice. Two 
4.40 to play in the third period. Blair shoots it in. Minute 30 left on the power play. Eagles looking for their second win in a row. Been a good game here. Now Waddle with it. Waddle across the blue line. Now in the Eagle zone. Quick shot. Benedetto sticks that aside. Rebound goes to Praisner. Now he had his pocket picked by Waddle. Waddle's been a feisty player out there tonight for Hurst. Now here's Praisner with it. Praisner near side boards. Lost the puck. Passes it to Jensen. Now Praisner comes up with it. Praisner with some room. Shot. Stick saved there by Tallarico. Back to the point. Schwab over to Quinn. Back to Schwab. 50 seconds left on the power play. Now Quinn moves in. Tried to put it in front. Shot. Save. Rebound. And that's going to be a net off the mooring. So we'll keep the face off in the Hurst zone with 43 seconds oh. left on the power play. Didn't see what happened there, Larry. I backed up and... Tallarico, uh, <laughs> Jeff, with a stick. With a butt end of a stick. You know those butt ending calls can be very crucial. That was Prisoner. I didn't see it, Larry. Was it... You saw it, obviously. Don't know if yeah. Our, don't yeah. know if our officials saw it. So I don't see any indications of a penalty. Four officials out there. You would think maybe one of them would have seen it, but it looked like we're going to have a call. We'll keep the face off in the Hearst zone. 3.56 to play in the third period. He says, look at that. Eagles still in the power play. Hurst cleared down the ice. Benedetto with the save to Schwab. Schwab now. We'll leave it to Wood. Now here's Scarella. Across the blue line. Scarella, nice move. He'll stop. Oh, oh nobody that one. there. This girl, a new player, maybe not used to the power play and the setup. So you would excuse him if that happens. Oh, come oh, on. Bad turnover there by Schwab. You He'll get it back. Yeah, you can't relax on a power play. And that's going to pretty much do it for the power play. With 310 to play. First at full strength. The Eagles holding on to their one goal lead. Now cleared to center. Lumberjacks with it. Neron off the stick of Griffin. Picked up by Blair. That will be shot down the ice, and that's going to be icing. Yeah. They'll bring the face off in the Eagles' end. We'll see if and when Hurst uses their timeout. The Eagles used their timeout early, Larry, and I yeah. think it was a real good timeout you're, looking you're right, back. It was. <laughs> when they gave up those three goals, and it was 3-1. to one. Yeah, you had to settle things down. Yep. Out of town, Larry. Rayside Belfour has beaten Espinola 6-3. Timmons over Blind River 4-3. And Poisson 4-2 over Kirkland Lake. All finals. Now a quick shot. Benedetto with the save. Schwab will play that off the boards. Kept in by the Lumberjacks. Another shot. Benedetto will hold on to that okay, one. That's what they need. The Eagles make a line change now because they couldn't on the icing on the last whistle. 2.44 to play in this third period. Larry and I will be back here tomorrow night. Timmons comes to town. Well, the pregame show at 6.45. Face off to the left of Benedetto. He's made 24 saves tonight. Timmons wins the draw. Plays it off the boards. Now behind the net. Blair, who has two goals for the Eagles. Only multi-goal scorer in this one. Now Fisher tried to get it in front. Now kept in by the Lumberjack. Shot blocked in front. Orfanos <laughs> trying to clear it out of the zone. Erdley keeps it in, plays it off the boards. The Eagles will get it out now. Johnson with it. Zach Johnson and George Orfanos with it. Johnson with the shot. Gloved down there by Tallarico, and he'll hold with 2.15 to play here in the third. Eagles will take that. Puts the face off in the Hearst zone. Yep, they will. We'll keep an eye on their netminder, Nicholas Tallarico, as far as if and when he is pulled. We expect that to happen in the next minute once Hearst gets the puck, if they get the puck in the Eagles zone. Face off, controlled by the Lumberjacks. 
Jensen, he gets knocked down now. Myron with it. As the Lumberjacks clear the zone. McDonald across the blue line. We're under two minutes to play. Now we're gonna have a whistle. What's going on here? I don't know, but I bet this is gonna be his timeout now. Let's see what happened. The puck just go out of play, Larry? No, that was a save on the side of the net oh, okay. by uh, Benedetto. Minute 55 to play in this third period. We'll see if Hurst uses their timeout. Doesn't look like they are right now. They do win the faceoff. Back to the point. Birdall, his shot. That deflects wide. Goaltender still in the net. Still lots of time left. Minute 45. Deshondo. On the end boards. Griffin to Deshondo. Now Deshondo. And shot. Save. I don't think Benedetto saw that one. He makes the save, Lacroix keeps it in as that one goes out of play. And that'll keep the face off in the Eagles zone with a minute 32. Now you really start thinking about pulling the net miner, Larry, maybe on a face off win, would you take him out? I, I, I still would, wait a little bit. He's, he's waiting, I don't know. I'm surprised he didn't give his time out. And then... Uh... Are they gonna send the face off outside the zone? That's a break for the Eagles right there. Oh, you're right, it is. As that pocket looked to be shot into the Unless it was deflected by a Hurst player, wouldn't that still keep the face off inside? Well, either way, no. Eagles win the face off, so no netminder pulled. As our Fanos has it at center ice, now back in the Eagles end, minute 20 left to play. Blair off the boards, Lamberti. Lamberti with the game tying goal in this period. Now Lamberti's got to be careful. He hit the, yeah, and that's going to be a penalty, Larry. Again, undisciplined play by the Eagles as Lamberti. Got a little up high on the Hurst player, and that's not a good penalty to take right Calling there. Calling cross-checking on him. And so that's going to make it, uh, well, it's one of two things, Larry. Obviously, it helps Hurst with the extra man advantage and when you pull the netminder. However, on the other side of the coin, the Eagles can shoot it down the ice, and there's no ice. So you're right, yeah. I don't think you want to do that if you're the Eagles, but again, there's a little bit of a break, I guess, yeah. in some way, but not a good penalty to take there by Lamberti. No. Not at this state of the game right now. Well, this is it. The Hurst coach, day. he got his time out, and he, he's got a power play also. Minute and a nine to play. Yep, minute so nine got, to play. We've got six on four here. Eagles looking to beat Hurst for the second time this season. And they'll play again here in a couple weeks up north. Okay, what do we have here? Time out. Time out, yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to say thank you to all those uh, that uh, text in and Absolutely. also those that came up to see us yeah, here tonight. Yeah, a lot of yeah, people tonight. Really, it was almost like homecoming week or something. Yeah, I want to say hello to the Lanning family and Lamberti family, the Schwab family as well, along with the Blair family, all on Twitter, the Parrot family on Twitter as well. And we hope to hear from you tomorrow night. And Linda. Got to see Linda in person. Even more impressive than on Twitter, I might add. Okay. Yes. Yeah, you're right. You're Thank right. Thank you. Let's just get some confirmation on that one, Larry. <laughs> I think I'm going out in a limb. I was, I was concentrating I, on the game. I was watching uh, the camera here, to, getting robbed. Okay. Face Hurst off win. one by Hurst. Birdall with the point. A shot. Rifle pull, shot. Save. Rebound. Nice job there. By Butcher by to Butcher stop that. By Butcher to block yeah. that as the net goes off the mooring. So, minute two left to play here in the third period. Would that take off four seconds? Yeah. Or something like Seems that? like it. Get oh, it. seven seconds. The so net one. empty in the Hurst end. The Eagles just want to get that puck and fire it down. No icings, so they can shoot at will. They want to win the faceoff first. That's the most important thing. Griffin with the faceoff. Eagles win the faceoff. Butcher tried to backhand that out. He couldn't. Kept in. Lacroix with it. Lacroix over the far side. Hurst with it. Oh, a good opportunity there, but it goes over the stick of the Lumberjacks player, Clark. Now that one that goes to center good. ice. Break for the Eagles. 40 seconds to play. Puck in the neutral zone. Gallant with it. Gallant at center ice. Shoots it in. Bouncing puck. Butcher just wants to shoot that hard off the boards. He does. Nice job there. Kept in, but here comes an Eagles with the chance. A on Shire, the empty right? net. Shire. No. Misses the net. 25 seconds left. Hurst still in this. Here's Birdall at center ice. 20 seconds. Cross the blue line. Birdall still has the puck. 15 seconds. Griffin to LaCours. LaCours with it. Now Gallant, 10 seconds to play. Birdall at the point. 
Bernal thinks about the shot. Over, fires. Lacroix misses the net. Five seconds. Back to the point. Bernal's oh, shot. net off. And the net off the moorings with Woo. four seconds to play. And so the Eagles win the faceoff. This game's over. Some dangerous moments there, Larry, wow. for a few seconds. For both teams there, yeah. the open net, and uh, Shire just couldn't, couldn't get to that puck. So here we go. Four seconds left. Big face-off here. Griffin's got to win this and get it back and get a quick shot. While Jensen just got to win it, Eagles win it. Eagles are going to win it by the yeah. score of 4-3 to three and win their second game in a row going into Timmins. Uh, Larry, final thoughts? Well, Eagles came back from a deficit of 3-1. to one. They didn't play well in the first period. They came back strong in the second period, and they came back and they held their own and had to come back to get two goals in the third period to win this game. And I was going to say that before the third period started, they each won a period. Whoever wins this period wins the game. And the Eagles won this period, and they won the game. Our final score here from Polar Stadium, the Sioux Eagles 4, the Hearst Lumberjacks 3 for our cameraman Rob Horn and for color commentator Larry Pazabon. Scott Nason signing off from the Polar. We'll be with you tomorrow night for another edition of Sioux Eagles Hockey on Hockey TV. Good night, folks.